It is here in Tampa, Florida, inside Raymond James Stadium. Our matchup in the American. A lot on the line for the Bulls of South Florida as they welcome in the Golden Hurricane of Tulsa. It is senior night for the Bulls, which means lots of emotion before the game on the field. It's a huge group. 23 seniors playing their final home game here inside this stadium and some of the all-time greats in the history of this program. There's two starting running backs, a guy who at the end of tonight probably will end up as the all-time leading tackler, Augie Sanchez in South Florida history, and of course their quarterback who has been one of the most dynamic players in all of college football over these last few years, Quentin Flowers as well playing his final home game. There's Sanchez as he makes his way on the field. The pregame ceremonies getting ready for the Bulls. Final home game in 2017. The rest of the team making their way from the locker room. South Florida with the one loss against Houston. Even so, still controlling their own destiny. Not only for a conference title, maybe a chance to represent the group of five in a New Year's Six Bowl game. And hi, everybody, along with uh, Laura Rutledge, Dave Fleming, and we welcome in Jordan Rogers, who has done such a terrific job in our SEC coverage all year long. Jordan joins us on uh, Thursday Night Football here for what is a big game for the Bulls. Everybody's talking about Central Florida next week. We know that one is huge, but to make that as big as it seems like it's going to be, South Florida's got to take care of business here at home tonight. Oh, put yourself in their shoes. These 18, 19, 20-year-old kids are looking forward one game away from achieving all their goals. So I asked Charlie Strong about it. Are you worried about your team's mentality coming to this game? He said, no, two reasons. The senior leadership, 23 of which we saw tonight get honored, over half of those are just about half are starters. The other reason, that Houston loss. A team, Tulsa, that blew out Houston, they're not overlooking them. It is true. It's the only conference win for Tulsa, the only loss for South Florida, that common opponent. So it does give you a little pause, South Florida coming in as a big favorite in this game, and uh, partially because we talked about all the seniors, but the kid who has led the way to transform this program, and it has been a great turnaround, is Quinn Flowers. He has been a special performer on the field, a guy who can do a little bit of everything, 100 career total touchdowns, so many of them in spectacular fashion. 28 wins. He likes will leave this program as their all-time winningest quarterback in South Florida history. Maybe will go down as the greatest player in South Florida history, and they've had some good ones. And it's not just on-field performance. It's also his personal story and his background overcome so much to get to where he is. You know the emotion of this night for him. For more on Quentin Flowers, let's go down to Laura Rutledge. Yeah, Dave, as the PA announcer here announced each senior tonight, they said they'll be joined by their parents, but that won't be the case for Quentin Flowers. He doesn't know what that feels like, and that's because both his mom and dad have passed away. And as he wiped away tears, you have to think his heart is full of his dad, Nathaniel, who was shot with a stray bullet when he was just seven years old in their front yard. His mom, Nolita, passed away from cancer his senior year of high school. And then his brother, Bradley, in 2014, was killed in a drive-by shooting just because he asked the driver of the car to slow down because children were in the area. Quentin Flowers has been surrounded by great support here at USF. This is a tight-knit family for him. These players mean the world to him, many who he'll have to say goodbye to soon. He tells his teammates to call their parents. He says, hold them tight, give them hugs, because he'd give anything to be able to do that with his own parents now. Very well said, Laura. There are a lot of great stories in college football. There may not be an easier kid to root for in the country than Quentin Flowers, who plays his final home game here tonight with that huge matchup against Central Florida looming next week. It's Flowers and the Bulls on senior night, and you know everything that's going through his mind here from Raymond James Stadium. Kickoff from Tampa coming up now. Let's take a look inside Nissan's Heisman House. Guys, guys, just relax. We're here for dinner. And I'll have the duck. Oh, what's on now?
Oh, Joe. Nobody needs to see that. Would you lock the door next time? Now I can't unsee it. Welcome to the Nissan pregame rush. Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. It's senior night, not just for the star players on the field. There's Panos uh, Valavanis, captain of the drumline team here at South Florida. His final home game. There's Jessica Sheffman, a, a member of the cheer team here at USF. Is her final home game in this uh, stadium. Uh, tight end walk-on Spencer Atkinson, who has big aspirations for his career after football. We'll talk about some of those as we go along here tonight. So it's not just about the players who have uh, made their mark in the history of this program. Numbers wise, it's about everybody enjoying senior night here in Tampa. This has been the Nissan pregame rush. Along with Laura Rutledge, Dave Fleming, Jordan Rogers here from Raymond James Stadium. It is Tulsa and South Florida. And the Bulls need to win to make next week one of the biggest games in their program's history. Tulsa coming off an excellent year. The Golden Hurricane last year. They won 10 games, won a bowl game. Things are looking up for the program, and it has been a big step back this year for Tulsa. Injuries been a part of the problem, but hoping to finish on a high note. This would be a big upset if Tulsa could somehow pull it off. Jones kicks off to Tyree McCants, who spins through one would-be tackler. and McCants upfield across the 30. Nice kick return. Arguably the best of the year for the struggling special teams of South Florida. Quentin Flowers, who will take the field. Bulls get the ball first. This was just a few moments ago, his final home game of his great career, thanking all the fans. And he went over to a couple different sections of uh, South Florida students to kind of say a personal goodbye. A kid who is so easy to root for with everything that he's been through, but everything that he's done on the field and meant to this South Florida program. His final game in the uh, home uniform here tonight against Tulsa. The accolades, dynamic player, but more than that, the humility that this young man displays makes you root for him. So Quentin Flowers having another big year, maybe not quite as big statistically, will hand the ball off on first down. And another senior, Dearness Johnson, without a lot of running room, gets a couple yards. Yeah, Dave, you mentioned this is a new offense. Uh, Sterling Gilbert came over, actually happened to be the offensive coordinator at Tulsa in 2015. This is something that he implemented the offense to see how much Quentin Flowers could handle. They've scaled it back, and they're just now hitting their stride this last month. And it has been an adjustment period. Flowers will throw on second down. That's a nice delivery, but the ball in the end was dropped. Valdez Scantling had it, couldn't hold it. It's third and eight. Last year, the numbers in terms of the touchdowns, total yardage were bigger. He ran a little bit more. The offense not quite designed that same way. This year, the touchdowns are down. Charlie Strong has talked a lot about what you mentioned, the selflessness of Quentin Flowers, not complaining about that, not sulking about the fact that maybe the numbers aren't as robust. They're winning games, and he's happy with that. He'll swing it out on third and eight, looking for a block and a cut up field, but not enough room pushed out of bounds. Johnson did not get there to be fourth down. Yeah, nice job early by this Tulsa defense. This Tulsa defense in transition from the 4-3 to a 3-4, kind of in that in-between phase still. Haven't played great this year, but that's a great way to start this game, getting off the field and getting their offense the ball. And there's their head coach, Philip Montgomery, a guy who before this season was being talked about as a potential candidate for even bigger jobs. That has become a tradition here the last few years in this American Conference. The punt. Wadley back to return. The punt goes out of bounds. So Tulsa's offense will come on the field for the first time. And this is where Tulsa, the defense hasn't been great, but their offense has gone backwards in a major way, especially through the air. Luke Skipper will get the start at quarterback tonight. You look at the numbers. They are stark. Passing touchdowns last year, 33. This year, they have thrown for a grand total of five. The passing game, which has been such a staple of this Art Bryles, Philip Montgomery designed offense, has kind of disappeared. And an amazing what a veteran quarterback having Dane Evans for four years, who set all kinds of records at Tulsa, will do. They've played with a couple guys. Obviously, Luke Skipper in there now. This will be his fifth start. Arm talent, got intangibles, but he's still learning. And they have an excellent running back, D'Angelo Brewer. It's tough to run against South Florida. The Bulls' defense has been tough. D'Angelo Brewer has a chance to go down in the record books. All-time leading rusher in this conference history. Not quite there yet. All-time leading rusher in Tulsa history. Getting close to that as well. So the 
Senior Brewer in the backfield. Penalty flag flies on second and nine. That's going to be a false start. Snap infraction. Offense number 74. Five yard penalty. Second down. Now that's on the center, who is a very good player. There's D'Angelo Brewer from Tulsa, hometown kid. Yeah, with the struggles of the passing game, Brewer really makes this offense go. And I even talked to one of my scout friends for the NFL earlier today and said, if he continues through this year with the numbers that he's put up, the career that he's put together, he's a guy that could be a late-round free agent guy. The landscape of the NFL running back is different, but he's got the talent, the size, and everything you need. Got a chance to get a look. Pressure comes, and Skipper goes down. Just engulfed in those big defensive tackles. The two of them are so key for this defense. Deidre Sanat, a big-time player in the middle of the South Florida defense. Yeah, you're going to see the size come down the middle here. Both these guys just under 300 pounds, talking about Sanat and Hector, but the athleticism. We're going to keep track of these guys. They don't come off the field. Even in third and passing situations, they're that big and that athletic. Yeah, the big guys in the middle so often will not be in there for these kind of downs. Not this duo going deep with a man wide open and the pass completed into South Florida territory. Nigel Carter with the catch and a huge gain for the Tulsa first down, 58 yards. And you see right there why Luke Skipper is now making his fifth start tonight. It was Chad President, great runner. This offense is just different with Skipper, and they're still learning and developing, but the ability to push the ball downfield like that is the reason he's taking the reins. South Florida's defense, as good as they've been, they've been a lot better. They have been prone to giving up some big plays. Brewer gets the carry on first down, and that counts as a very big one on third and long. And you're just going to see what happens when you get a little bit of rush, but zone eyes. Look at the zone eyes in the secondary. Quarterback buys a little bit of time. The offense is able to hold up. That's what happens in zone coverage. You get caught looking at the quarterback, you're going to have somebody run by you. Carter with the big catch. Second down and nine for Tulsa. Brewer, right side with an opening, and there's that power you're talking about. Gets very close. Maybe stopped just a little bit short. One of his favorite players in the NFL, Le Le'Veon Bell. Mm. Finished it like Le'Veon Bell in that one. It is third down and less than a yard. They'll give it to Brewer, who gets the first down. Not much more, but first and ten inside the 15. Tulsa on the move. How important of a first drive for this Tulsa offense. Philip Montgomery, Montgomery, the head coach, is calling all the plays, and this is the way they talked all week, the way they wanted to start. Tempo and continuing to move the sticks. Luke Skipper, the redshirt freshman quarterback, gives it to Brewer, who gets dragged down after a gain of a yard. Philip Montgomery, who first came across Art Bryles at the high school level, was with him at the University of Houston. At Baylor, was hired as the head coach at Tulsa. Had uh, some monster offensive numbers first two years as the head coach of this program. Brewer, Skipper kept it and a nice fake. Skipper, touchdown. Now the Golden Hurricane with the huge conversion on third down, taking all the way into the end zone to take the lead. And Dave, he's not known as being the guy that's going to run and beat you, but look at the move off the zone read. Gets vertical. He's capable when he's running the ball. He's, they're going to still bring in Chad President at times to run the football, but Skipper can do just that. And that is a good point. Usually that part of the field, that's where we see the second quarterback who yep. is kind of the designated runner. Not that time. And Skipper looked like he's got plenty of athleticism. How about the start for Tulsa? Two and eight coming into this game, and Luke Skipper and company go right down the field and punch it in against the South Florida defense. The Golden Hurricane take a 7-0 lead. ESPN Thursday Night College Football, brought to you by Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. Very cool look, some hand-rolled cigars. That is the uh, Tabanero Cigar uh, Factory in historic Ybor City, the cigar capital of the world. Big part of the culture here in Tampa, Florida. Hard to have a better night than tonight. 70 degrees, no humidity, a great time of the year. 
Oh, I here. love Florida. And I've been there. I've had a cigar from there. And you uh, played some of your NFL career in this stadium, so it's a little bit of a homecoming for you. You were kind of Mr. Florida in the NFL. Mr. South Florida has been Quentin Flowers over the last few years. Bulls went three and out. Flowers actually had a nice pass that was dropped on that first South Florida drive. Here are the numbers. All-time South Florida history up there in pass yards, touchdowns, rush yards. Has a chance to be their all-time leading rusher. Even from the quarterback position, he's rushed for 39 touchdowns, more than 10,000 total yards in his bull career. He came into the season with dark horse Heisman hope with the type of numbers he puts up. This is an offense that is going to take some time. And they've continued to try to build this and simplify this around Flowers' strengths so he can be successful. I think he would have been um, more of a candidate if not for the coaching change and the system change. That Absolutely. has limited some of that production. He keeps it on first down and gets three, maybe four yards. Brought down by Jesse Brubaker. Bulls have not always been quick starting. They've had some slow starts. It began in the opener. They played against San Jose State a long way from here. There wasn't much of a crowd. And they were down in the blink of an eye with all the expectation heaped on them at the start of the year. There's Sterling Gilbert, their offensive coordinator, who has implemented that new system. And it was an adjustment period early in the year for everybody as part of this program. Nice little jet sweep type action for a South Florida first down to Dearness Johnson. Dave, you know what's interesting about that? When Charlie Strong mentioned that San Jose State game, he also mentioned the thing that surprised me. His coordinators, Gilbert, they're all on the field. All of them. That's a nice delivery from Flowers right to midfield. Another South Florida first down to Marquez Valdez-Scantling. And usually offense and defensive coordinators like to be up in the booth. They like to have a certain angle. But Strong wanted his team to get to know each other, these players to know the coaches and how they respond in adversity. Hand off and a nifty move near the line of scrimmage for Johnson. It was an interesting point because both Sterling Gilbert and Brian Jean-Marie, the defensive coordinator, are down at field level. And I, it could change in the future, but first year with these kids in this program, he did feel like it was important for those coaches to be down there. South Florida moving the ball here. Flowers gives it. A nice hole up the middle, right close, but stopped just a little bit short. It'll be third and a half a yard. Tulsa's defense has been, how can we put it gently, vulnerable. <laughs> they have been. They've been young, too. They're young on the back end. It's been a next man up mentality. And as I mentioned, that 3-4 transition. Allowing almost 550 yards per game. Show something here early on. That's enough for a first down. Just enough for the Bulls to move the chains. One of the two co-defensive coordinators, Brian Norwood of Tulsa. Bill Young, who's been around for a long time, also helps with those duties. Kind of a beleaguered unit this year. Play fake. Flowers in the pocket, and now with room to run, he is going to run. He got a few yards before he went out of bounds. And even just a few yards there, you know what that does? That starts getting in the minds of the secondary and the linebackers. They start paying attention as that pocket breaks down, and that's when big plays happen downfield. The flip side, I do believe last year that would have been a bigger game. I, Flowers is, is waiting and waiting and waiting and looking downfield and trying to be more of a thrower. Last year, I think he takes off and gets a big chunk, sort of like that, inside the 30 down to the 25, first down South Florida. You remember how he described it? He said last year was kind of run and make it happen. This year, a little more pass first. They will have some design runs, as you see here. But. And I, it's, I'm not saying it's a good or a bad thing, but I think it definitely has been a difference. Powerful running down the sideline and touchdown. Tyree McCants did not go out of bounds. The officials were looking at one another to try to make sure 25 yards into the end zone. Let's check ourselves. The big man, Tyree McCants, is a 240-pound receiver. You heard that right. And he's nimble. Let's see. Well, he's in. Definitely in. 240. He's about. He's not six feet tall. <laughs> Dave, they haven't listed at 225. I was on the field earlier asking his teammates. No way. I got it, got it from his mouth. He's about 240, but he can move. Yeah, he definitely can. That was some not only speed but agility. 
So they looked at it upstairs. The touchdown counts. We saw that extra point attempt to try to tie the game. Up and good. Well, Flowers leads the Bulls offense down the field on senior night. And Tyree McCants, who is a junior, but a talented guy, into the end zone at 7 7. Would it be overstating it to say that the state of Florida is sort of in college football central this year? It's been interesting, that's for sure. Miami already clinched a spot on that ACC title game, a huge performance against Notre Dame in a playoff position. Central Florida having a great year with their head coach, Scott Frost. The Bulls still have a chance at a conference title, 8-1. and one. But how about as you move a little farther north in this state, the traditional powers, Seminoles first non-winning year since 1976. Jim McElwain already been fired. Nothing's going right for the Gators. And we didn't want to leave out Lane Kiffin putting up some monster offensive numbers. FAU 7-3. and three. They have been an interesting team undefeated in Conference USA. A lot of stories in Florida college football this year. And those second tier teams outside of Florida State and Florida, what a great opportunity to capitalize in recruiting. No kidding. A chance to pick off some players who ordinarily might go to those powerhouse programs. The kickoff deep. Tulsa with the return game out to about the 30 yard line and then pushed backwards by the Bulls special teams. Let's go down on the field to Laura Rutledge. Dave, USF's defense leaves their defensive tackles, Deidre Sanat and Bruce Hector, on the field the entire time. But, guys, they are already struggling with this Tulsa tempo, and especially Sanat. Defensive coordinator Brian John Marie telling him, hey, sit down until you catch your breath. And Sanat still taking some deep breaths, trying to feel like he can get back out there and play to the level that they need him to. Now, that is that's a good report from Laura, good info. I mean, that's a very talented kid, a chance to and a good chance, I think, to play in the NFL. One series of downs and already out of the game. Big hole up the middle. Brewer to midfield and still going. D'Angelo Brewer right away. One play into South Florida territory. That's 24 yards. The left guard Tyler Bowling here with a big block to Spring Brewer. And already the tempo back on the ball ready to snap it. Tulsa believes the best unit on their team is their offensive line. Mike Love knocks that one down to the line of scrimmage. They have an experienced and talented group up front. So all the stuff that's gone wrong for Tulsa this year, the offensive line is a centerpiece. <laughs> Deidre Sanat still trying to catch his breath, not on the field. You know what's surprising about that? It, their offensive coordinators from Tulsa. These offenses are near mere images of each other. They get to see it every day in practice. They do. The tempo and... and Frankly, in college football, high tempo offenses are the norm now. Nothing unusual. Brewer, another carry. He's hard to get down. He, he sort of gets low. He's not a tall running back. Sometimes can be hard to find in the midst of, midst of all the big bodies. It's a nice game to set up third and medium. Here he comes. He is a talented player. How about that? A 305 pound defensive tackle running back in for a third and passing situation. Kid who originally committed to Florida State decided he wanted to stay closer to home, playing for South Florida. It's third and five for Tulsa. Skipper pressure gets rid of it, and it's incomplete. He had two receivers running across the middle. Keenan Johnson was one of them. Chris Minner, the tight end, was the other. Skipper would have loved to hold onto the ball just a tick longer. But the pressure comes straight up the middle by Augie Sanchez. If he can hold on to that just a hair longer, that receiver, after he passes the middle of the field, that's when they're taught to start looking. Great pressure by USF caused a bad pass there. So the sophomore Thomas Bennett, the punter, even though Tulsa is in South Florida territory, they're going to punt the ball away on fourth and five. Trying to pin the Bulls deep. End over end punt. And that one makes its way into the end zone for a touchback. Great day and night to be outdoors. And why not night fishing off the pier? What are you going to catch at night here in Tampa? 7-7 score.
That's a look across the bay into Tampa. you got to go in the other direction over to the Atlantic coast for this game Saturday noon. Number three Miami off their huge win off of a couple of back-to-back -back big wins. They host a much-improved Virginia team with a lot on the line Saturday noon on ABC. It'll stream live on the ESPN app, and it has become a sensation. The turnover chain, and they've been using it a lot. 16 turnovers forced in the last four games for the Hurricanes. Hey, whatever makes it work. It's working. I, I, there are a lot of folks, I think, who feel like that game has a chance to be a little closer than you might expect. Coming off the big wins, noon start, see what kind of crowd they get, kind of maybe a sleepy uh, environment early in that game at least. Well, Dave, probably similar to this game, right? Almost a trap game type environment. They're looking forward to that ACC championship possibly against Clemson. Yeah, already clinched their spot in the ACC championship game. But in order to make that a, a game to get into the playoff, you got to take care of business from here on out. Flowers pressure, dancing around, gets away. That's what Flowers does so well. How did he get out of there? Now he cuts it upfield, back to the middle, and finally goes down at the 44-yard line. What a run for Quentin Flowers. Only 19 yards, but spectacular. And you're just going to see some pressure off the edge by six. Diamond Cannon, what did he say the other day? Got to make the first guy miss. Now that's what you asked him. Okay, if you're going to run, what's the key? Make the first guy miss. He made the first guy miss here, but not the second, third, fourth, and fifth. As Tulsa swarmed Flowers and put a big hit on him, gain of two. You know, offensive coordinator Sterling Gilbert takes this into account. He says he's going to call about maybe eight to ten design runs, knowing that there'll probably be a handful where Flowers will just take off as well. Second down, handoff, straight up the middle, big hole and big gain. 30, 20 for Tice, touchdown. 54 yards. They can score quick. Tice is as capable as Ernest Johnson. A little thicker, but obviously you saw he's got breakaway speed as well there. That's the answer, right? You come out a little sluggish, that's the answer this USF offense has been looking for. A sixth-year senior guy who's very popular in this program, has hung around through some injuries. Last year broke his ankle, ended what he thought was his senior year, has come back and is having a great year. For South Florida, the extra point is good, and it's a 14-7 Bulls lead. You're going to see a double team here by Ruff and Atterbury. Blowing to the second level, making it easy on Tice and the speed. Finish the rest of the way. Tempo, a handoff, touchdown, answer. Dave Fleming, Jordan Rogers, Laura Rutledge back here in Tampa. Look at Quentin Flowers. Once Tice got through that initial line, he knew it. He was gone. Tice with the long touchdown run. South Florida goes ahead. And another one of the seniors, 23 of them playing their final home game here tonight for this Bulls program that has been totally rebuilt by this senior class. And Tice gets into the end zone. Big game in the Southern California, not South Florida, Southern California this weekend. USC, UCLA, Saturday, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific at the Coliseum. Scene will be great with the torch lit in the fourth quarter. Those longtime rivals and the two quarterbacks are really a big part of the story. Our college football awards spotlight brought to you by the Home Depot, Darnold, who had so much hype coming into the year. The stats may not back it up. I think he's still playing at a high level. The turnover's been the big problem for him. Yeah, he's still young. I mean, he captured our hearts at the end of last season, and we forgot to mention that he's still got to develop. All yeah. the talent, NFL-type quarterback, he's still growing. Well, remember to tune in for the Home Depot College Football Awards show December 7th, 7 p.m. right here on ESPN. Brewer with the carry. Got three yards on first down. Augie Sanchez, middle linebacker. Part of that play, the guy who at the end of tonight likely will share or hold the all-time USF tackles record for a career. A little pitch back. Well, Tulsa trying some misdirection, but the Bulls read that well and stopped a big gain. That's Keenan Johnson. Ronnie Hoggins got in on the tackle. Great job staying disciplined in the secondary. That's the reason those reverses end up getting big gains is that the secondary 
Start spying in the backfield. Big third down here. You always want to weather the storm. Right after a big score, you got to at least put together a few first downs. On third and three, Brewer got the carry and got dropped. And there is number 10. I guess he's got his wind back. Deidre Sanat with the tackle. It's fourth down. Sanat here. He only squats 675 pounds. You're going to see the leverage. That's a double team. That is a double team. He just blew through. Stayed low. Great big tackle on third down. He got Brewer on the ground with one arm. Well, that's not easy to do. D'Angelo Brewer will end his career as the all-time leading rusher. This putt nearly blocked. In fact, it was tipped. Seemed like the whole special teams of South Florida got in the backfield toward the punter. And it was tipped. I think that's Devin Jones-Stewart who got a hand on it. Ends up being a 36-yard punt, so not a disaster for Tulsa. Let's see if we can see where it got tipped. You see Jones Stewart come off the left side of your screen. There's only three guys on that wall for Tulsa, so if the outside rusher has enough speed, he can get there. Boy, if he lays out. Yeah, I think he gets it clean. Yeah. It's been a horrible year for South Florida special teams, and that might be putting it mildly. So that was a chance. It's a positive play, chance to make a rare big play by their special teams. First and ten, Quentin Flowers and company back on the field. A pitch play. And a broken tackle. Johnson still going. Johnson for a South Florida first down. Let's go down to Laura. Dave, these Tulsa defensive coaches are not going to like that broken tackle. They've been telling their players over here, hey, we're sort of in the right positions, but all you're doing is just reaching your hands out. You actually have to run through the hip, keep your eyes right, and complete the tackle. Play fake, and an open man downfield. Flowers knows he missed one. Mitchell Wilcox, the tight end, and Flowers is disgusted. Oh. I was just about to say, if you saw the receiver split to, to the bottom of the screen, they created space, a little play action. Oh, you see how he held his arm up there? He was trying to be too cute with it, too careful. Sometimes, I know this is hard to believe, Dave, but sometimes those wide open ones are the hardest for quarterbacks. And that was wide open. That might have been another touchdown for South Florida had he thrown that one on target. Hand off, straight ahead, first down and more. Johnson, powerful running inside the 40. Still going down to the 35. 19 more yards on the ground. Tulsa's defense is just getting torched now. Quick tempo for the Bulls. Flowers deep down the field. Incomplete. There was some contact. Marquez Valdez Scantling finally separated from Reggie Robinson. Just couldn't hold on. Marquez Valdez Scantling is 6'5. I would love to see this ball put with a little more air so he can adjust to it. A little low trajectory there, left inside. That's another throw that Flowers could have made a little easier on his receiver. Just got a fingertip on it, I think. Kid from St. Pete who started his career at NC State. More than 100 pairs of uh, shoes. Almost as many as you. I, I have very, very many less than that. I have about six. Six good ones, though. It's six really, really good <laughs> ones, but that's all I need. Flowers steps up, throws again. He's got a man. Touchdown. Third chance, and he delivers. Darnell Solomon, 35 yards. This is just going to be a post down the middle of the field. It's the play action. Even just a flash fake in the backfield freezes those safeties. And notice how it's even slightly underthrown. Perfect, right? You're not going to miss that. Not an overthrow, not an underthrow, just enough to let your receiver make an adjustment. I think a, more of a relief than yes. anything for Flowers. Yes. He missed a couple chances. You give him three tries, he's not going to miss that third one. Solomon, a very talented young receiver. Kick is up, and it is good. It was 7-0 Tulsa, remember that? How quickly momentum can change things. Wasn't that long ago. Since then, the offense has come to life for the Bulls. Darnell Solomon in the slot. Little double move post. You see, he got on the toes of the defender. Got him to turn his shoulders. Staying in there, taking a hit. 
You know what? He's probably like, see, I should have hit it the first two times, but finally. Yeah. Almost a little, almost a little mad at himself. He it took three. I, he is a guy, Flowers, who can be real hard on himself. And I think everybody here loves his attitude. He is all about winning, all about his teammates. Everybody, everybody on this program loves Quentin Flowers. But I think the one thing they've worked on him with is being less hard on himself. Yeah, if you're too hard on yourself, then you play in the gutters of your emotions. I mean, he's not celebrating that touchdown. He's thinking about the couple that he missed. Kickoff deep. Tulsa out across the 20. The big hit. The Golden Hurricane offense back on the field. It's not a lot of excitement over that one. 75 yards, a couple touchdown passes. Five rushes, 39 yards. One very spectacular rush so far for the senior. And the sophomore Solomon has a chance to be a big time player for the Bulls. Those two have caught the touchdowns from Flowers so far. South Florida defense back on the field, leading 21 7. Sanchez on his middle linebacker spot with the hit and the tackle of Brewer. Augie well, Sanchez, whose brother played for South Florida, sort of grew up around the program, came here. Willie Taggart gave him a chance to be a scholarship player, was invited to be a walk-on a couple other places. He loves to fish. And will go down as the all-time leading tackler in this program's history. Didn't make the tackle there, but a teammate did, gain of a yard. You know what's amazing about a guy like Augie Sanchez? It, it, the measurables on paper, it's just average. Not overly big. He's not the fastest guy on the field. He's a football player. And if you've ever played football, you've been around guys that are just ball hawks. Three-year starter, captain of this defense, playing his final home game. And you see him in the middle of the defense. He is the communicator. Trying to get everybody lined up. Tulsa on third and six. Skipper delivers. Sanchez got the hit on, but not before. Tulsa first down to Justin Hobbs. It's a big third down. Get behind a couple scores and the momentum is with the other team. You got to at least get two first downs and change field position at minimum. Obviously, they'd love to score, but at least get the chains going and slow that momentum that USF has. Final 30 seconds of the first quarter here in Tampa. Brewer, the play started, but it shouldn't have. Penalty flags thrown, and that's going to be a false start. Illegal snap. Another Offense one. That's number 74. Off your penalty. First down. You're talking about a guy who started 37 games for Tulsa. He's been flagged twice for that illegal snap move. It's a big stadium. <laughs> <laughs> big moment. I don't know. He's experienced. That shouldn't happen, but. That is unusual. I mean, get, he, he get the nerves a, out. They, they talk about him as arguably their best football player, one of them. But twice he's done that. This time, clean snap. This should be the final play of the quarter. That delivery right on target for a nice gain to Hobbs once again out toward midfield. That's where Tulsa will have it as we start the second quarter. Well, Tulsa got off to a great start in this one. Big underdogs on the road. They scored first. Skipper into the end zone. You were thinking maybe USF was looking ahead to their big game next week. Doesn't feel like it now. Some big plays for the Bulls offense. And South Florida leads 21-7. This is the American Conference on ESPN, just a few miles from the Riverwalk in Tampa here at Raymond James Stadium. Senior night for the South Florida Bulls, top 25 team in the AP, still not ranked in those uh, college football playoff rankings, hoping to be after this week. Augie Sanchez, their senior captain on defense, now is the all-time leading tackler in the history of this program and just added to it with another tackle or at least an assist of a tackle for Sanchez. Congratulations to Augie. 368 career tackles. That's a lot. That's unbelievable. Now he can take a deep breath. Now he can just play some football. It's probably in the back of his mind. Now just get back to doing what you do. He did say to us he wanted to set that record if he could in the first quarter. I think he did it on the final play of the first quarter or close to it. So he set a goal. He met his goal. 
Hobbs with the catch first down Tulsa so the Golden Hurricane offense on the move here down 21 7 to South Florida in the early seconds of quarter number two Luke Skipper redshirt freshman from Texas making his fifth start of his Tulsa career well, handed off to Brewer with some blockers out in front Bouncing it outside, Brewer inside the 30, close to the 25-yard line. Great job of bouncing this outside. This is the vision. This is one reason he could be an NFL back. Not only does he have the size and strength, look at the vision. Setting up the blocks as he gets to the secondary twice, and good blocking downfield from his receivers. Close to 15 more yards for D'Angelo Brewer. Having a nice first half. Gets the pitch. Sanchez almost took the pitch. Augie Sanchez was already in the backfield to make the hit. Little power toss. He's a savvy player. A loss of a couple. Second and 12. Play fake. Sanchez trying to get to the quarterback. Can't quite get there. Skipper has got some speed. He showed it off there. They will spot him with enough yardage to get the first down. Nigel Carter, the wide receiver, put a good block to help make that a bigger gain. Still a young quarterback. When things start to break down in the pocket, use your mobility. First and ten, quick snap, handoff Brewer. Straight ahead for a few. He is close to 70 yards now in this first half on the ground. He's got a shot tonight to break the all-time conference rushing record. It's getting closer. Ten play drive for the Golden Hurricane. Keep an eye on this matchup down at the bottom of your screen. You got Tulsa's best receiver, Justin Hobbs, on a very talented Dietrich Nichols. But that's 6 4 on 5 10. Skipper's going to run and could not get away. Tried to spin move, but Devin Abraham got him to the ground. Always look for those matchups down in the red zone. Hobbs is talented. And it is interesting, isn't it, Jordan, that it's not Chad President, the running quarterback, who's kind of been the red zone quarterback for Tulsa. In this game, when they've been down in this part of the field, Skipper has stayed in. There's President. He's ready. He's strapped up. Usually when they get inside the 15, that's when you'll see President. Don't be surprised if they get a few more yards here that he might throw them in. Play clock already down to five. Under five, they get the play snapped, and Skipper going nowhere. That play just had no chance. Greg Reeves, Deidre Sanat, and company were there. It's fourth down. They're thinking about it. They're going to kick a field goal here, but but Dave's surprising. Uh, you, you have a quarterback that's mobile, but you have a quarterback on the bench in Chad President that's physical and a better runner, and you decide to call a quarterback run. I feel like 10 should be in the ballgame there. Redford Jones, who is the all-time leading scorer in the history of Tulsa football, will try a 30-yard field goal. Feels like touchdowns, not field goals necessary tonight for the Golden Hurricane to pull off an upset. But they'll take the three points down the field. 13 plays for three, 21-10 Bulls. Allstate is proud to be part of the team that comes together to do good by contributing to participating university's general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kicked. Allstate has contributed millions in scholarship funds. D'Angelo Brewer having a nice first half for Tulsa, staying loose on the sideline. Golden Hurricane have to settle for a field goal, though. So down 21-10. Playing on the road on senior night for Quentin Flowers in South Florida. Jones with Valdez Scantling deep alongside Dearness Johnson. Johnson, after a delay, is going to bring it out and return. Uh, it's not Johnson. In fact, it's Tyree McCants who got to about the 23-yard line, but there is a penalty flag down on the field. Likely against the Bulls. During the return, holding. Receiving team number 30. 10-yard penalty. First down. Well, it has already been an ev eventful senior night for Quentin Flowers, the quarterback, leader of this South Florida team. All the emotion, thinking about his family, his mom and dad, who are not here with him, I'm sure. 
And then on the field, doing some spectacular stuff. Extra motivation for senior night, and this is why he's so dangerous. He'll beat you with his legs, get you into man coverage, and beat you downfield with his arm as well. His dad was killed in their Miami neighborhood when he was a young boy. His mom diagnosed with cancer and lost her battle with cancer when he was a senior in high school. Came here to South Florida to play for Willie Taggart. And the Bulls, his brother, on the eve of his first career start at quarterback, was shot and killed a kid who has just gone through so much personal tragedy and has come out on the other end of it all as a stronger, better person and is admired and loved by everybody up and down this South Florida football program. For a lot of guys, your teammates end up being family. I think that's even a little more so for Quentin Flowers. So he's playing extra hard for his guys out there, his family out on the field. A little hesitation move for Flowers and got the first down out to the 25-yard line. Let's go downstairs to Laura. Well, Dave, USF offensive line coach Matt Maddox telling the O-line, guys, now is your time to win this game. We need to start running the football a lot and try to dominate time of possession so that they can't get back in it. Jordan, you know about giving some love to the O-line as a quarterback. That I do. The big uglies I say that so lovingly. I'm sure they really appreciated that. <laughs> My boys from Vandy probably listen to that going, ah, he did call us that. Jordan, who is a, a quarterback at Vanderbilt, and, and your Vanderbilt program did something, I think, similar to what South Florida has done here. Not a lot of winning years before Flowers and this senior class showed up. And they have totally turned this program around. Last year, 11 wins. This year, 8-1, and one, a chance for a conference title. All the success for the Bulls last year, they did not win the American Conference. That's been the motivation. That's been the goal since day one. They haven't been scared about saying that inside the locker room. Flowers dancing around, looking downfield. Instead, I think smartly will throw the ball away. He thought about it. He, he wanted to push that one downfield to Valdez Scantling smartly. That's a word. Throws it away. Charlie Strong took over. Willie Taggart hired by Oregon. So Charlie, after leaving Texas, comes here to South Florida. A guy who has been so instrumental in uh, his career. This state has been so instrumental for him. Knows the state backwards and forwards. That's been a good fit. This move to avoid the first tackler by Darius Tice out to the 45. Third and six for Charlie Strong's Bulls. Charlie's name starting to hear his name tossed around all the job openings particularly in the SEC a league that Charlie knows so well from his time at Florida at South Carolina. We'll see what happens for now focused on this Bulls team flowers complete right at the sticks first down Bulls. Temi Alaka with the catch. Valdez Scantling trying to use that block. Just got a few yards on first and ten. Doesn't matter how much football you've played, when you have a new offense, there's always going to be growing pains. And you can see here the conversation with Sterling Gilbert, his offensive coordinator. There's a few things he missed. Probably missed two touchdowns early on in that drive. A couple drives ago early on and came back, corrected it, but... They have bigger goals than just this game. They're looking forward. They want to clean everything up and limit mistakes as much as possible tonight. And Flowers is hard on himself. He is. He is a very harsh critic of his own performance. Second down. Tulsa shows some pressure. The handoff right into that pressure. No gain. Charlie Strong did admit to us the bye week leading into this Thursday night game for South Florida. He allowed his coaches. He did not let his players look ahead to Central Florida, but he did allow his coaches to start to do some film work for this Friday. And that's normal. It is. You don't want to focus on it. You don't want that to be something you, you preach to your team, but you want to get as much of a head start as you can. Central Florida will play in Philadelphia against a much improved Temple team. Flowers dancing around. is going to get hit from behind, and the ball came out. The ball's out, and Tulsa's got it. A turnover for Flowers. He did not see that defender coming from behind. Diamond Cannon, who forced the fumble. And then Brubaker, the defensive end, picked it up. Tulsa gets the ball back. 
And what a big play by this defense. When you need a play, down 11. This Almost is down. His knee was so close, but I don't think it was, and that allowed the hit and the fumble. And this is why coaches will preach ball security at all times, even when no one's right in front of you, because it never happens from the guy you see. Philip Montgomery knows that's a big play for his defense. They needed that. Tulsa gets the ball back. First turnover on either side. 7.23 to go, first half. South Florida defense back on the field. All the thinking ahead to Central Florida and the matchup next week with the other top team on this side of the American. That won't matter if South Florida doesn't take care of business tonight. Brewer goes backwards. Augie Sanchez leading the way again. Skipper pressured. Skipper gets away. Going backwards and now finally throws it away. Takes a big hit from Augie Sanchez. But got rid of the ball to prevent the big loss. Great job buying time. Ooh. A good little hit he put on him. Right into the turf. Conversations with the offensive coordinator Sterling Gilbert and his senior quarterback. Third and 11. Would have been a lot worse had Skipper not gotten rid of the ball. Pressure comes. Skipper heaves it up. Incomplete. That was Sanchez running down the sideline in coverage. Nico Sautel, the linebacker, got the pressure on. See the pressure come from the left side here of Skipper. It's just a linebacker fire. Tries to buy as much time as possible. I love the fact that he throws it up. He's got the matchup he wants. Brewer on a linebacker, but just not enough time to give him a catch of the ball. And it was pretty good coverage from Augie Sanchez, who already has seven tackles, a couple QB pressures. They have a big first half on his senior night. Bennett will punt. Here comes again, a little incidental contact. That punt goes out of bounds. Well executed inside the 10-yard line. We'll come back to Tampa. Bulls get the ball back, leading Tulsa 21-10. ESPN Thursday Night College Football, brought to you by Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Real Coca-Cola taste, zero sugar, zero calories. And Allstate, official protector of college football fans. Senior night for what might be the most accomplished class in the history of South Florida football. It's not all about just the star players like Sanchez and Flowers. How about Spencer Atkinson, a senior invited walk-on from here locally in the Bay Area, a kid who came to this program after a good high school career, has already graduated, got his degree in criminology. He's got big plans for once football is finished. Best buddies with Augie Sanchez. They like to go fishing together. They have some pretty good catches here in the Tampa area. He's going to get his graduate degree with a perfect 4.0 GPA once uh, this year is over. For more on Spencer, let's go down to Laura. We had a great time talking to Spencer yesterday, guys. And one of the things that he credits USF with is giving him an opportunity to meet former police chief in Tampa, Jane Castor. She has been a great connection for him and has allowed him to be in position to get his dream job in the police department. He's also done some pretty interesting ride-alongs and has been fully invested in his future career. Will always be, though, a bull through and through. Yeah, good stuff, Laura, because he really gave specific credit to the athletic department mentorship program that's been set up in the name of Leroy Selman and uh, helps a lot of kids in this football program and in the athletic department as a whole connect with folks in the community in professions that they would like to pursue. Flowers, big game, Johnson wide open. And Johnson out across the 40-yard line getting a big chunk through the air for the Bulls. That's 34 yards. That 
right there is something you didn't see a lot of from Quentin Flowers last year. As I mentioned, it was a run and make it happen. They're a pass first team now. He went all the way through his progression and checked the ball down for a big game. Under six minutes to go, first half play fake. Flowers over the top, incomplete. Trying to hit his tight end of Wilcox, second and ten. You're going to see the vision here to the front side. And he's going to go all the way through his progression, right side of the field, top of the screen. And when things get oisy around him, he checks the ball down. And sometimes that's when you get the biggest gains. It's a veteran, veteran move by a quarterback that hadn't done a lot of that until this offense under Sterling Gilbert. Dearness Johnson was a huge part of the passing game in the previous South Florida offense. You're right, just hasn't uh, hasn't been a huge part of it through the air. He's gotten a lot of carries like this this year. He's been a productive running back. That'll be third down for the Bulls. Just a final thought on Spencer Atkinson, and there are others like him. We're kind of using Spencer as emblematic. It's not all about the star players in a college football program or athletic department. Senior night, a chance to recognize all that these players have accomplished, not just on the field, but off the field. Spencer has accomplished a lot. Flowers dancing around. Quentin Flowers, who else could do that? Not many. Out into the open. Flowers still going. Inside the 30, another spectacular run for number nine. Lamar Jackson, it's a short list of guys who can do this. This is video game material here. This is unbelievable. Changes field and direction multiple times. Look at the vision. Stops on a dime. Is, that's what makes him special. And that's what I think personally has been missing a little bit from yeah. this South Florida offense. Have not asked him to do much of that. And to me, when you ask him to do more throwing and less of that, you take away the best thing that he does. Yeah, decreasing the designed runs. Obviously, you don't get as many of those. He's been able to make plays when the pocket breaks down, but you're right. We haven't seen as much of that as we have in the past. And could be why the numbers are a little lower, but hey, you got the wins in the W column. It's all that counts. Second and 10 for Flowers and the Bulls offense. Valdez Scantling takes the handoff. And we'll get tackled right around the line of scrimmage. Back down to Laura. Guys, before this drive, Quentin Flowers was very frustrated with himself. We told you he can be hard on himself. Sir Sterling Gilbert telling him, hey, it's okay. We still have the lead, trying to calm him down. Seems like he came out on this drive running a little angry. <laughs> it's hard to get him to, to stop beating himself up. I mean, this. It's a guy who's thrown for a couple touchdowns, has 78 yards rushing, is having a big first half on paper, but has been a little cranky on the sidelines. Third and 11. Flowers in the pocket. Now's going to take off again. Trying to use that block, change directions, and the turf just gave out, slipped a little bit. So it's fourth down. We'll see what Charlie Strong and company decide to do. They have a solid reliable field goal kicker so Emilio Nadelman will come out on the field and try for three and flowers frustrated with this could have had a big game but he slipped I know from playing on this field sometimes these NFL fields get a lot of wear and tear it's towards the later end of November that footing's not as good as it was in August 41 yards for Nadelman who's got a big leg kick is up and it is good from 41 out, South Florida adds to their lead. 24-10, Bulls over Tulsa. Taco Bell is a proud partner of the college football playoff. Be on the lookout for Taco Bell students, sections, and passionate fans like these at games all season long. It's a growing South Florida football program. Big school here in Tampa. They just announced this week the uh, plans for a beautiful new practice facility on campus to boost up this program that won 11 games last year, 8 and 1 this year. Their home games here in the home of the uh, Bucks in the NFL, that familiar pirate ship. Bulls with the field goal after a long drive, 24 10. That's the South Florida lead on senior night at home against Tulsa. Students like to sing here too. 
I do. This kickoff a little shorter than usual, taken by Stokes to the 20. And the 25, Tulsa's offense will come back on the field. Let's check in in studio with Adnan Burke. Harvard Yale, that's a big one this weekend. Can't wait for the picks on that game. I have sneaking su suspicion Michigan is going to play really well and really? Uh, be very tough on Wisconsin. Wisconsin needs that one. I I, I think I, I'm I'm going with the Wolverines this weekend. Oh, straight up? And straight up. Win the game. That would that would end, I think, Wisconsin's. Yes. Life. Definitely. Brewer hit in the backfield and dropped for a loss of a couple yards. You know, Wisconsin, all the discussion about the Badgers and strength of schedule and quality wins and where should they slot in, undefeated team in the Big Ten. South Florida was on their original schedule for 2017. That's they were right. supposed to come here and play the Bulls early in the season, and they exercised some sort of option they had in their contract and push that game a couple years later. I wonder if Wisconsin's regretting that now. If they had come here and matched up with South Florida, a quality team, chance for a big win, maybe the conversation would be a little different. Our college football playoff rankings brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. And I think, Jordan, that Wisconsin is at the center of a lot of whatever controversy there is. Undefeated Big Ten team, is it possible that they could be left out? That has become, to me, almost the talking point of the year in college football. The good thing for them is that one of these two teams right here is going to lose. So if they can win out, beat a ranked Michigan team, they already have possibly a ranked win over Northwestern, over Iowa, whoever's in the Big Ten championship. I think they win out, their resume is going to be good enough, but they do need some help in front of them. Play clock winding down. They get the ball snapped. Tulsa does. Skipper. On the move, trying to buy some time across his body. He's got his man complete for a first down. Keelan Stokes with the catch. That's a big play. This is an impressive throw, Dave. This is a right-handed quarterback sprinting laterally to his left. That's the arm talent. That's the arm talent head coach Philip Montgomery mentioned as the reason they went to him late in the season. And another big play, this time on the ground, D'Angelo Brewer inside the 25-yard line. That may be the run that sets the all-time conference record for rushing yards in a career. It's not like the American Conference has been around forever, but still impressive. And D'Angelo Brewer still just a little bit short. Keep you posted on that. He's getting a nice chunk here on first and ten inside the red zone now for Tulsa. This offensive line is rolling right now. It's a power play on that one, just down and around, pulled the right guard, got onto the linebackers, and run that same play right here. Unofficially, I'm doing the quick math. Brewer's about 10 yards away from the New American Conference career rushing record. He gets three on second down to set up third and short. You know, Dave, that's at Stanford education. It's not a bandy. Complicated math. <laughs> Complicated math. Yeah, well, 101, he needs 110, huh? Brewer. Got a yard or so and did get the first down. He's been a real good one. Marlon Mack of South Florida is the guy who holds that American Conference career rushing record. When was the American invented? 2013. <laughs> Pretty recent. I, look, I mean, I, I, they still had a, a good number of quality running backs. Skipper tough to bring down. Got a couple. And with the, the clock running, Philip Montgomery has all three timeouts. He will use one of them here. This would be big for Tulsa. Now, the, the ball did come out at the end of that play. So I, I, Tulsa calls the timeout. They may also be taking a look as uh, we go to a break here from Tampa. Was he down? Maybe that he recovered anyway. South Florida was sort of arguing with things. That ball was moving. I think it was out. 
But it looked like Skipper held on, so Tulsa will have the ball right after this. Well, we showed you those playoff rankings So Miami, number three in the country in playoff position as of now. It could be tested at home. Virginia's much improved Saturday noon Eastern kick on ABC. It'll stream live on the app as we come back here on the other side of the state of Florida on the Gulf Coast here in Tampa, the Bulls of South Florida. As Chad President is in the game for the first time, he is the running quarterback we've talked about. He kept the ball on the ground. Every defense has to be aware of his ability to run. He doesn't throw much, and South Florida was very much aware. Timeout taken by the Golden Hurricane again. After no gain, it'll be third down. I like that move, though. I mean, you bring in the guy that's more talented, a little thicker, a little more of a dangerous runner, and when you're this close to the end zone, it's still pass it. He's still capable of throwing a jump ball if he needs to. So I, I like that move. We'll see if they come back to him. It's fun to have Jordan with us here on Thursday Night Football. And South Florida has done a lot of things. Well, Tulsa, though, I mean, it does feel like a big play, a big sequence here. We know the Golden Hurricane are underdogs in this one. If they could find a way into the end zone near the end of the first half, maybe you build a little pressure on a team that is it would be hard for them not to be looking ahead to a huge game next week. Yeah, three points is not going to do it. They need seven, and they need to continue to hit these big plays. We saw the big play down the sideline in the first drive. Another big run here on this drive by Brewer. But you got to punch it in here against a talented offense. You can't stop them. Or a 340 yards offense for USF already. they got to keep pace and get points and get touchdowns. The best offense for Tulsa has been D'Angelo Brewer. 21 carries in the first half. But on third and six, a little harder to use him as a weapon in the pure run game. Just inside the 10, they could get a first down. It's not an end goal to go situation here for the Golden Hurricane. Skipper back on the field, 38 seconds to go in the first half. Skipper, short drop, pressured immediately, breaks free, and Skipper will walk in touchdown. They couldn't get him down, and from there, there was nobody on the last line of defense. Skipper's second rushing touchdown of the game. And who knows? Maybe Tulsa can start to build a little pressure on the Bulls. They're looking to take a shot in the end zone. It's a five-man protection here, so any linebacker that comes, they brought two there. Didn't have enough numbers, but you make the first one miss. In man coverage, there's nobody in the secondary to stop you. Nobody. Remember, Tulsa gets the second half kickoff. So the Golden Hurricane are going to get the ball to start the second half. Still 33 seconds for South Florida to play with in this first half. But that touchdown from Skipper in the Tulsa offense has changed the feel of this game. USF brings six. Nobody back. They wanted the jump ball. I kept thinking, are they going to take advantage of the height of their receivers? They were trying to. And just when I was talking about putting the mobile quarterback in, <laughs> allegedly the non-mobile quarterback makes them pay. Yeah, it's, it is definitely the case. When we're watching Luke Skipper. We've seen him on film. He can move. We're watching him for the first time live here tonight. He has athleticism. More than I thought. More than I saw on film. And, and I was calling for them to put in Chad President down near the goal line. But more and more you see a Luke Skipper, the more it's obvious how capable he is running the football. A guy who was recruited at Tulsa by Sterling Gilbert. Was. Now, of course, we've been talking about him a lot, the offensive coordinator for South Florida. And when uh, Sterling got hired by Charlie Strong to go to the University of Texas to be the offensive coordinator there, Skipper, I think, wavered a little bit. Am I still going to go to Tulsa? Philip Montgomery was able to hang on to what looks to be the quarterback of the future for this Tulsa program. How could you not as a quarterback? With their track record of the offense and the numbers they can put up, especially from the quarterback position, pretty hard to turn that down. Tulsa kicks the ball deep. And that will go through the back of the end zone for a touchback. ESPN app. Stream every ESPN ABC college football game live at home or on the go. Scores, news, highlights all season long, but mostly, for me at least, it's the games. Downloaded now the ESPN app on weekends where you're trying to follow all the top teams. You jump around game to game. South Florida to set up a huge game one week from tomorrow. They need to win this one. Chance to win the conference, represent the group of five in a New Year's Six Bowl game. Uh, the Bulls not taking chances here at the end of the half, taking a knee. You know, Dave, I don't understand that. You got three timeouts. Just hand the ball off. If you don't get any yards on first down, okay. 
you know, go to half. But if you spit one, you can call a timeout, and you may find yourself in field goal range. So they're, they're content, up a score, but I think I would at least hand the ball off there. Yeah, Tulsa's the team. They go into the locker room trailing, but I think they might be a little more content than the Bulls. They look like a pretty confident group playing well here tonight on the road, trying to be spoilers on senior night for Flowers and South Florida. 24-17, that is our halftime score. The Bulls lead, but not by much. Time to send you back to studio. Adnan, Joey, Jesse, guys, take it away. Well, expected to be a lopsided game instead. We've had a good one here through one and a half, 24 17, South Florida with the lead over Tulsa. Dave Fleming alongside Jordan Rogers back here in Tampa. And uh, we saw some of the highlights there just a, a moment ago. The big play, I think, was a hallmark of the first half. Big plays on both sides of the ball. And Tulsa really looking more explosive than we've seen previously this season. But it started with USF on the ground. Tice broke off a huge run. And then the very next drive, they answer with a double move, get behind the secondary, opened up by Quentin Flowers scrambling around. Catching the eyes of that defense, but Tulsa getting on the back end. This one set up their first scoring drive. And then Brewer up the gut. And really, they're not overpowering USF. There's some missed tackles out there, missed opportunities for USF to get on top of Tulsa and stop this offense. The overall numbers are pretty even for two teams where the records are not at all even. And the big plays on both sides. We've had 19 different plays covered 10 or more yards in one half of football. South Florida trying to make sure that next week is a monster game against UCF. They got to take care of things here at home against uh, this Golden Hurricane team that will get the ball first and with good field position. That's a mistake. The kickoff goes out of bounds. And so it'll be a good field position for Tulsa. Let's go down to Laura Rutledge. Well, it seems like, Dave, that we'll see a lot more of Luke Skipper in this first, in the second half for Tulsa because Coach Phil Montgomery told me, look, he's playing with a ton of confidence. We haven't seen a whole lot of Chad President. He said that's because they didn't want to affect the confidence of Skipper. And he said, look, he's been pretty mobile. That's why you would bring in President. He also said he told this team at halftime, we have a chance to do something great, but we have to get points here. And by points, he means touchdowns guys not field goals and Laura the most importantly when you're getting points Luke Skipper as a young quarterback my message to him don't force it do not throw the ball or create turnovers that's what USF thrives off of I've been impressed D'Angelo Brewer has also been really impressive in that run now he is hurting a little bit we'll see if he gets up okay he is down that run makes him the all-time career rushing leader in the history of the American Conference it's not a long history but still an impressive overall number for D'Angelo Brewer, and yet he is down. Kind of an awkward tackle, so he's going to try to walk that one off. He jammed his leg or his ankle. Yeah. I think he's favoring that right ankle a little bit. Good to see him get up and at least trot off, but see if we can see if he gets twisted here underneath. No, just a little bit. Got caught in the grass slightly. They have leaned on him in this game, that's for sure. Well, you can see he's already got some tape on there. So probably something that's been bugging him a little bit. Sometimes you tape that back up, hopefully it gets loose. First and ten, handoff. They do not have depth at the running back position. That will be enough for a first down. He was about a half a yard short. That's Rowdy Simon. The, the, everybody after Brewer is a walk-on or a former walk-on. <laughs> they have lost the next four behind him on the depth chart, including a really talented true freshman, Shamari Brooks, who was putting up big numbers for Tulsa. So the four next running backs after Brewer are all out for the year. This is basically their fifth string guy, Rowdy Simon. So as long as Brewer is not in the game, they will miss him a lot. And Dave, Brewer has 242 carries on the year. Wow. <laughs> Corey Taylor in right there. Is capable. He's a 5'10, 214 pound sophomore, but just 34 carries on the year coming into this game. And actually, that's Rowdy Simon in there, excuse me. He had four rushes total. Four, even less. On the year. The other guy you'll see will be Corey Taylor, but 
Rowdy's, you know what, he's, he's a compact runner. He's 5'8", 204. He doesn't have the explosiveness as Brewer. Nobody does. On this Tulsa team, play clock winding down. Skipper will keep it. Stuck the ball in there for a while. He gets tripped up. Got three yards or so to set up third down. Tajay Fullwood with the tackle. He's still working on Brewer on the sideline. He's batting it up. Ankle wrapped up as tightly as possible. They need him in the game. USF is going to bring some pressure here. Picked up at least initially the throw across the middle and a good open field tackle. Stopped short of the first down. You wonder whether Tulsa feels like they got to go for it. It's fourth and one. I think you stay out there. Looks like they're going to. It's the same play they converted on the third down earlier in the game. Threw it short of the sticks. We're able to break a tackle and get past. That's fourth and one. Opening drive. You got nothing to lose. And I, I will say this, Jordan. You would like to have him in the game. Yeah. For fourth and one. I would not be surprised if this is another Luke Skipper run. You, you have a running back in there and a tight end. That's two extra blockers. Let your quarterback run it here and pick up that yard. Trying to get organized. Play clock to five, and they will hand it off, and just enough. That was nearly a missed exchange between Simon and the quarterback Skipper, but Roddy Simon gets the first down. Skipper wanted that one. He was, he was down there listening to me. Just his own read. But you got to make a quick decision. You see, it's it's almost the wrong decision. Mike Love, number 98, comes in there. I'll give it to Simon again. And it's not a knock on Rowdy Simon, who has been a solid contributor to this Tulsa program, but he's not D'Angelo Brewer. All right, they got it all wrapped up again. Back in the game. I'll tell you the hardest thing after getting your ankle spatted is to let that tape loosen up. Your, your ankle's already a little stiff from tweaking it, but that tape is so tight, sometimes it takes a few plays to loosen up. Second and ten for Tulsa. And it is too bad for this uh, Golden Hurricane team. They've had a good number of injuries. Everybody at this point in the year has, but so many of them come at, at that one spot. Brewer gets the ball, but goes down quickly. Mike Love makes the play. Hey, I think you could have argued, Philip Montgomery might have argued, at the start of the year, at the start of camp, deepest position running back. Now, thinnest, <laughs> thinnest position. Not so much. That's sort of what Alabama's going through, where so many of their injuries, different level of program, different scale, but so many injuries concentrated in one spot of your roster. Not easy. Third and ten for Tulsa. Skipper with some pressure coming, and Skipper heaves the ball away. Now they're going to look. Was he outside the tackle box? He did barely get the ball back to the line of scrimmage. They're still talking about it and trying to decide the first part of that equation. I guess he did get outside. That's, that's pretty close. Here comes the flag. And Bruce Hector providing the pressure here. Offense number 13. Squad foul, lost it down, fourth down. And I think it's a good call. It is. You got to at least make an effort to get outside the pocket. A lot of times they'll give you the benefit of the doubt if you start to run a few steps and you throw that ball, but late decision there. South Florida's defense holds Bennett back on the field for his fourth punt of the game. Fullwood is the return man, and the Bulls get to this one. They almost blocked one, tipped it earlier. This time they get there, and it's the same kid, Devin Jones-Stewart. Maybe they found something in the Tulsa special teams. They have taken advantage of it. It was the exact same look. They brought pressure to that wall from the left side. And we said it last time, if you were laid out, he might have had a chance to get this. You see the pressure here, left side. And he laid out that time, and it was, that was about as easy as you're going to see. Not even close. I mean, Bennett just had no chance. Tulsa's lucky that wasn't scooped up and going the other way. Well, South Florida special teams having a positive game. 
Flowers on the field for the first time in the second half. Will throw on first down. Gets the completion to Solomon. First down of bounds just short. Gain of nine. Coming into this game, South Florida had had six of their own kicks blocked. All of those happened in their first seven games. That, that is a huge I've never heard that. number. They're almost at the bottom of college football in kickoff returns. They've given up some big returns. That play incomplete. I mean, really, it's just been a disastrous year for South Florida's special teams, particularly you consider it's a roster with a lot of athletes top to bottom. So tonight must feel good for the special teams unit of the Bulls. Going to need it late in the season, too. Looking forward. Don't want to look too far forward. Still in a, in a dogfight here in the third quarter, but special teams in big games usually end up flipping the tide. Third and one for Flowers in the offense. He will give the ball. Tice first down, Bulls. Tice, who's averaging 10 yards of carry in this game, had the one big one for his touchdown. Total yardage starting to pile up. Flowers, first choice was taken away. Here comes a penalty flag. Flowers goes down. I would think that one's going against South Florida. Yeah, did a great job early in the drive. Holding, offense number 73. 10-yard penalty, first down. They are the worst team, the worst in the country. <laughs> In penalties coming in. Now it's been a, 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 a night of improvement in that regard as well, but that holding call goes against Charlie Strong's team. And Dave, what happened there early in the drive, he did a great job with an RPO of pulling the ball and throwing it quick. Same thing there, that was a run play, just didn't get the ball out quick enough. This one set up the completion, but going backwards, a loss to Valdez Scantling. Robinson made the nice play on the outside for Tulsa. The worst team in college football in terms of penalties. So you have terrible special teams and commit more penalties for more yardage than any other team in college football. That negates so much of the other good stuff that South Florida does. I mean, they're still 8-1. and one. They still have a chance to be conference champions. But in those regards, they have made things tough on themselves. Flowers gets away. Flowers from behind will be dragged down. That's Robinson again. I love what Tulsa did here. They brought a corner fire from the backside boundary. You see Flowers sees it late, makes him miss the first time, but great job by Robinson of rallying and staying on the football. And that's, again, I, you, you can't blame the quarterback for keeping his eyes downfield, seeing if there's a play. I think last year he's just going. Yeah. Takes off. And you can see the hesitation there where he's still looking downfield. That allowed Robinson to come back and get him to the ground. Third and 23. Flowers steps up. Again, looking downfield, and this one is incomplete. Contact, no flag. Intended for Marquez Valdez Scantling. Flowers wanted to see the flag. It's fourth down. He'd had a chance to make a play on this. You're going to see Marquez Valdez Scantling's feet get tripped up here with McKinn Whitfield. I'm okay with no flag there. If your feet get tangled up, Whitfield's going for the ball. Absolutely. You read body language there at minimum, and Whitfield is going eyes forward trying to make a play on the ball. <laughs> it's, it's, it's too bad because he would have had a big play there, a jump ball at least. South Florida is going to try a long field goal, 48-yard attempt, play clock winding down, and that may ruin their chances. Charlie Strong, in fact, is going to have to burn a timeout. He trusts his field goal kicker, Nadelman. But a timeout burn to make sure they can get the ball snapped and try it from 48. 24-17, you can see Valdez Scantling still shaking his head. Wanting that penalty flag that never came. The next edition of Sports Center with Scott Van Pelt coming up next when we're done here. Good game in the NFL tonight. Titans and Steelers, the Warriors and the Celtics. Celtics have won, what, 13 in a row after starting the year 0-2. Warriors trying to end that win streak tonight. Giancarlo Stanton from here in the state of Florida, across the state in Miami, the MVP of the National League. Maybe his last uh, moment as a Marlin. We'll see. You're a big baseball guy. I am. Yes, I am. Both from the Bay Area, Giants. Yeah, the other Bay Area. The people here call yeah, this the right. Bay Area. I'm from West what Coast. we like to call the real Bay But You know, they, you can get into an <laughs> argument with folks down here about that.
All right, out of the timeout, 48-yard try is up, and it is good. Good use of the timeout to make sure your kicker had a reasonable chance, and he took advantage. Emilio Nadelman from 48 yards out makes it a 10-point South Florida lead. And Charlie Strong said he's comfortable with him from 55. This one, 48. Drove it. Plenty of room to finish that one, and at least they got three. If you want to have a battle of the Bay Areas, a lot of things would support the Tampa Bay Area, but uh, no, sorry, the cable cars in San Francisco blow the uh, trolleys here in Tampa out of the water. Yeah, totally. Sorry, I mean, they're nice. Adrian Sanat and the USF defense getting ready to come out on the field. He is having a, a big game. Ten tackles from his defensive tackle spot. Despite having to leave the game early, he was just out of breath. This kick return out to the 20-yard line. A guy who is a real NFL prospect in the middle and anchor for the South Florida defense, Deidrin Sanat, started playing football in just his freshman year of high school, originally committed to Florida State, so it didn't take him long to become a dominant player at the high school level. Outland Trophy watch list before the year. And a guy that NFL scouts come to watch each and every week. He will get a chance to play. At the next level, Deidrin Sanat from Immokalee High School, big powerhouse high school here in the state of Florida. Ten-point lead, South Florida. Their defense back on the field. And play fake. Skipper will go down. He is sacked. Ball came out late, but he was already down. So just a sack. And for more on the big man in the middle of the defense, let's go down to Laura. Yeah, Dave, he's still been trying to catch his breath throughout this game, but like you said, has a good game despite that. Defensive coach is telling his backup, Kelvin Pinkney, to be ready on this drive because they want to make sure they can spell him if needed. But the real drama has been on the sideline with Sanat's jersey. He had ripped some holes into it early in the game, uh, cut holes before the game because it was a little too tight for him, and it started to just unravel on the right side. One of the equipment managers has had to sew it up on the sideline, and it was a stressful situation for Sanat. He had a needle really close to his side and some aggressive arm holes go in there. Looking like it is hanging on for dear life, that jersey. By Fire the way. Snap. Delay. Offense. Uh, you, you, you penalty. Second down. Understand the penalty here. While we were talking about Sanat and the, the tattered jersey, Luke Skipper, after that last hit, has had to come out of the game. I don't know if he got ripped in the neck, and maybe that's what's hurting him a little bit. Uh, South Florida is lucky that wasn't a penalty, I think. Jawan Brown got in to make the sack. Big difference these days between Skipper and Chad President is now in. He'll complete the pass across the middle. There's Augie Sanchez to get Justin Hobbs on the ground. Third down and very long. Not really a play call here. Dave, you got your backup quarterback in. That's a better runner. You don't want to force a pass. That could end up being a turnover. I think this is a run, a screen, something easy just to give you a little better chance to punt the ball down the field. I mean, Chad President, you can see Luke Skipper is not comfortable on the sideline. Chad President was a big time high school player, was recruited by Baylor when Philip Montgomery was there, but much more of a runner than a passer. He throws that one downfield, and it is caught close, but stopped just short. Nigel Carter, short of the 30 yard line, to set up fourth down. <laughs> May have made things a little interesting for Philip Montgomery. I would imagine they're still going to punt on fourth down at two, and they will. And Skipper is headed toward the locker room. That is not good news for Tulsa. He's been impressive. Not good because he's got the ability to push the ball downfield, as we've seen a few times tonight. But his playmaking, his mobility has really flashed early and been the reason Tulsa's in this game. And they have a backup who has experience in Chad President, but. Skipper's been really good tonight, and now they're without their starting quarterback, at least for now. The punt, South Florida put more pressure on that one. They've already blocked one and partially blocked another to send us to a timeout. Skipper headed back to the locker room. South Florida here at home looking for their ninth win. They lead 27-17. ESPN Thursday Night College Football. Brought to you by the Lexus December to Remember sales event. Offers available for a limited time. 
so much great high school football in this Tampa Bay area. Hillsboro, Tampa Bay Tech, Plant, Jesuit, just about a mile away from here, Raymond James Stadium, some powerhouse programs from a, a part of the country that has as much talent, I think arguably, as any in the United States at the high school football level. And tomorrow, regional semifinal playoff weekend begins. Jesuit, we sent our camera crew over to visit the kids at Jesuit yesterday as they get ready. They had an upset win against Jefferson High in the first round of the playoffs, so they get a powerhouse Lakewood team tomorrow night. Underdog again, maybe Jesuit can keep uh, their uh, sort of Cinderella story going. Jesuit's had a lot of really good players over the years. So by their standards, five and five year, just kind of average. But high school football here means so much, and there are so many players. You can have a year, Jordan, where 400 kids from the counties around Tampa, 400 players will sign in Division I in one class. I mean, it's a, the, the talent level here is amazing. We had a really interesting conversation with Sterling Gilbert, who is a Texas guy. Yeah. So another incredible hotbed of high school talent about the differences between Texas high school football, Florida high school football. And he said some stuff that I had never heard before about the comparison between the two. Yeah, it makes sense. You know, he was talking about how Texas, they develop players. Since seventh grade, they're running the same offense that they do in high school. They have specific periods in high school where it's just football or just whatever sport. So they become really prepared for this college atmosphere. Whereas in the state of Florida, so many of the kids, it's not like they don't have good coaches. They do. Yeah. On third and short, South Florida will convert. But the resources dedicated to hiring coaching staffs, facilities, managing middle school programs. Sterling Gilbert said when he was a high school head coach in Texas, he would start to work with the players coming through his school's system in sixth, seventh grade. Unbelievable. Get them used to the offensive and defensive systems that they'd run once they got to high school. You know about all the facilities. If you've ever seen Friday Night Lights or any of that stuff about Texas high school football, you don't have that kind of stuff here in Florida. But Sterling Gilbert, Charlie Strong, both told us what you do have is incredible talent level. And you know what they have? Incredible speed. You want speed? Florida got some really fast players, and you see the team speed of USF, evident of who they recruit. Second and six, Flowers looking for somewhere to go with the ball. How about this? Just take off. That's usually a good result for the Bulls. First down, South Florida. Flowers pops up after the big hit. This Bulls roster, 97 of their players are from the state of Florida. You got three from Georgia. No other state has more than Jeez. one. Basically, every kid on this South Florida team is from Florida. And why not? Why would you need to go anywhere else? In a lot of ways, Willie Taggart's idea, now Willie came from Manatee High School as a player before he took over as the head coach in this program. Deidre Sanat, another local kid. They are working on that jersey. Laura was telling us about the travails of his number 10. But Willie Taggart's idea was the five, six counties around Tampa, just that all, all the players that we would ever need come from this area. That pass was right there and dropped by Temi Alaka. That was a laser. Alaka did not have time to put his hands up. You see, try to catch that one with his body. You, you know what's interesting, David? One of the biggest stats that I started looking into, into high school recruits, and especially Florida, Texas, 13% of all FBS, FBS players come from Texas. 11% come from Florida. That's unbelievable. All FBS, every state in the entire country, and you're finding hotbeds in Florida and Texas, and as we talked about, for different reasons. Miami, Houston, L.A., Atlanta, but Tampa is right there in terms of metropolitan areas also, even within the state of Florida. Penalty flags thrown. Flowers went into a slide and started that slide well short of the first down mark. So this would be an important penalty call. It's going against Tulsa. Personal foul, face mask, defense, after distance to the goal, automatic, first down. Wow, that is a big call. It was going to be fourth down and maybe a field goal try coming up. Instead, first and goal, South Florida. Really the first time we've seen Tulsa hurt themselves. 
And I said first and goal. They can get a first down inside the five yard line. Yep, there it is. Face mask. Valdez Scantling. Just enough to get that penalty flag thrown. They can get a first down right about the one yard line. South Florida can. Flowers looking toward the end zone. Will throw it out of the end zone. Well, I love. This time of year, if you love high school football, playoffs are starting, the kids are so excited, Friday nights, and here in Tampa, those games that we spotlighted will be a big deal for a lot of kids, a lot of families. Anyway, just a, a way for us to, to highlight the talent in this area and high school football in general. It's that time of year across the country. College football can be special, but I tell you what, I've been through every level, professional included, nothing replaces Friday night under the lights. How's Pleasant Valley's team this year <laughs> up in Chico, California? You Flowers know? on the move. Pleasant Valley can wait a second for Flowers. Throws, intercepted. And not a good decision by Flowers, probably also not a great decision by Cannon to bring the ball out, but Tulsa will take the turnover. They come up with the pick and get the ball back. South Florida knows that was a chance to pad this lead instead still up just 10 and one of those things you can't do a veteran quarterback knows don't throw back over the middle late hurt your team give Tulsa another chance What a night here in Tampa. Noontime kick across the state in Miami. Another home game for the Hurricanes and a big one. They are in the top four now in the playoff rankings. Miami and Virginia ACC matchup on ABC noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. It'll stream live on the app. Miami has clinched a spot in the ACC championship game, but their dreams are a little bigger than that these days. After the interception, Brewer breaks out into the open. I guess the ankle is all right across the 20 for a big gain and some breathing room. D'Angelo Brewer, who is not 100%. You can see even as he trots back to the formation, but he picks up 18 yards. Adrenaline's amazing thing. Great block by the left guard, Tyler Bowley in there pulling across. Brewer's banged up. The starting quarterback is in the locker room. Luke Skipper, Chad President, the backup. Is in. This is what happened to Luke Skipper last time Tulsa had the ball. Yeah, hard to tell. Looks like his neck gets tweaked. I think his head goes down here at first. It's a pulled back. Tell you what, so, sometimes as a quarterback, if you, your neck stiffens up, you can't look side to side. It's more important than you think. That is a forward pass. A little borderline. Not a good pass from Chad President, incomplete. Quentin Flowers, we were talking about how hard he is on himself on the sideline. Early in the game, even after his touchdown passes, he has reason to be disappointed in himself after that interception. Yeah, he's missed a few tonight, and let alone, that's just a decision that he usually doesn't make. When he gets outside the pocket, he knows, I'm going to try to beat you with my feet. If someone's wide open, I'll keep my eyes up. But nine times out of ten, he tucks that, and it's just a good game instead of an interception. Final minute plus of this third quarter, it's third and eight for Chad President and Tulsa. Originally a Baylor commit, President. Now the backup at Tulsa gets away from Mike Love. Throws it. That one almost intercepted. Incomplete. Ronnie Hoggins had a chance to pick it off. You see the athleticism of Chad President. Similar to what we saw out of Luke Skipper. This one, though, that's got to be 10 rows up in the stands. Cannot, cannot afford a turnover here. Well, he's coming back out with no helmet. That is probably a telltale sign. Luke Skipper headed back to the sideline, but without his helmet, that usually means head injury not coming back in the game. The punts have been an adventure for Tulsa. And this one was as well. And just not protecting at all. A line drive kick. Not much return. Pretty decent coverage, but still good field position. Fullwood across the 40. Bulls offense comes back on the field. We've seen the good and the not so good from the senior quarterback Quentin Flowers tonight. Uh, he's been dynamic with his feet, making plays happen. Is what we love about him. The cutback, the vision downfield is what makes him a special player. He's developed as a passer throughout this entire year. They've simplified. See, making plays with his feet is what comes most natural to him. 
Yeah, he's coming off a game. Three touchdowns, first four drives for South Florida. Last five drives, a couple field goals, two turnovers. Flowers is coming off a game. He was laughing with us yesterday about how he couldn't believe. I threw it 37 times. This is what he's always done so well, run the ball. From the time he was in high school at Miami Jackson High to his college career, which has been so decorated. 7,000 plus passing yards, 3,000 plus rush yards. Not many in the history of college football have done that. We'll throw it here on first down. Another drop. Valdez Scantling has had a very hard time holding on to the ball. And yeah, flipping back and watching film on the UConn game, Flowers had 516 total yards, and there was probably a handful of drops that could have made that over 600. Something these receivers have had a problem with late in the season. But he just, he thought, well, I, I, I never in my life had I thrown it 37 <laughs> times in a game. That one he throws behind McCants incomplete. And you, and you know why they're able to do that, though? Initially in the season, Sterling Gilbert mentioned, we put a whole bunch in from a verbiage standpoint, from a concept standpoint, and then we started to scale it back. As Flowers started to develop and they started to realize what he was good at, what he wasn't, they scaled it back, simplified it. He doesn't even handle the protections as it's relayed to the offensive line. Simplifying has allowed him to play faster, think less. You've seen him improve in the second half of the season. Game 10. Flowers in the pocket across the middle, not close, incomplete. And he's upset. He thinks his receiver ran the wrong route. A little miscommunication is fourth down. Now look, I get it. You come in as a new coaching staff. You're thinking long term. You want to put your system in. But there's been a lot of this this year with South Florida. The numbers have still been good offensively. It's just not been as crisp. We've seen that look a lot tonight. This was a team that was top 10 in college football last year in total offense, scoring offense, and they changed a lot coming into this season. Again, I'm not being overly critical. I understand why they did it, but they tweaked with something that was definitely working, operating at a very high level. They'll take a delay a game, give their punter Jonathan Hernandez a little extra room. And it's declined, so Tulsa says, no, you got to punt it from here. <laughs> Skipper back on the sideline, but not looking right. And you hope that he'll be okay long term. A kid who's got a pretty bright future, I think. He looked good tonight. I, I tell you, we mentioned it. More athletic than I thought. Made some plays with his arm. Best thing he did was take care of the football. This punt, end over end. That one almost tipped. It may, may have been. Fair catch at the 15. Tulsa gets the ball back. A 19-yard run by that guy on the first play of the drive, then three straight incompletions. Huh. They punt the ball away. It's 27-17. Tulsa's quarterback Luke Skipper who started this game as we saw has made his way back to the sideline very gingerly but will not go back in this game. Tulsa athletic trainers saying that he is done for the game and is dealing with a head injury. And he is. Uh, thank you Lori. He is obviously in some discomfort. Uh, you know, it looked not innocent. You could see what happened but didn't look like a serious play but right away his reaction after being dragged to the ground was a guy who is not going to be able to continue. D'Angelo Brewer having a nice game again. I know he wants to be out here supporting his team in a 10-point game here entering the fourth quarter, but he doesn't look like he needs to be sitting on the sidelines. I might get in a darker, quieter place if yeah. I were Luke Skipper, the way he's looking. That one stops short, so it's going to be a half yard to go for a first down Tulsa. Man. I mean, what's the point, you know? You understand him trying to support his teammates, but he is not right. That will be the final play of the third quarter. This one most expected to be a blowout. It has not been. Tulsa hanging tough against a good South Florida team on senior night in Tampa. End of quarter number three, 27-17 USF. You're watching the American Conference on ESPN. It is senior night here in South Florida at Raymond James Stadium. Bulls of USF take a 10-point lead, 27-17 into quarter number four, trying to set the stage for their matchup next week against Central Florida. 
Third and short handoff Tulsa and that's a first down D'Angelo Brewer gets enough. So move the chains for the Golden Hurricane. Not the turnover chains for the Hurricanes but move the chains first down Tulsa leaning on D'Angelo Brewer a lot tonight. Bulls defense which has been a much improved unit this year much improved has given up some chunk plays tonight the second half has been better and now the backup quarterback in that hurts Tulsa but this has not hurt Tulsa Brewer has had a heck of a night he is up over 150 yards rushing for the game with still a quarter to go it's not for lack of the wrong defensive scheme or call that also sets the all-time career Tulsa rushing record D'Angelo Brewer so that's impressive he set the conference career record tonight and now the Tulsa record 3,643 yards before that last carry president quick snap penalty flags thrown I don't know if uh, South Florida was totally organized Charlie Strong doesn't look happy on the sideline illegal substitution 12 men on the field defense five yard penalty First down. Well, you see the defensive coordinator, Brian Jean Marie, and Charlie Strong. Those two have been together for a long time. Charlie can be hard on his <laughs> defensive coordinator. That's just maybe a little taste. And Brian, we were laughing with him about how he's on the sideline, and in some ways, he's kind of the buffer. Those two have known each other for so long. Let Charlie yell at him and spare the rest of the coaches when uh, the head coach gets a little ticked off. Some people might think that bright shirt he's wearing is for the defense to look at the sideline and see him. That's actually for Coach Strong to know where he is when he needs to yell at him. <laughs> yell at me. Well, Brian's done a really good job this year. Huge improvement defensively for South Florida last year to this year. And basically the same personnel. Now, I, yeah. think, I think unquestionably the Bulls underachieved on defense last season. But Brian Jean-Marie and Charlie Strong together have helped get this unit back on track. Yeah, it's really been the turnovers. I mean, they weren't in the top 50 in any category outside of turnovers last year. They have nine different defensive categories in the top 25. Coach who's got a really cool personal story himself. President gets shoved backwards. Wow. Bruce Hector pushes the quarterback back. It'll be third down. Brian Jean-Marie's parents are both from Haiti. And they came to the United States, came to New York City years ago. He is the first generation of his family in America. Brand new, his family to the sport of football. And he's a really good coach. Third and four for his defense. Play clock winding down. President, can he get organized? Can the line get set? Down to two, down to one. They got the play snapped. President looking for that corner, couldn't get there. Good pursuit from the Bulls defense. Khalid McGee, that'll make Brian happy, and maybe his head coach too, no yelling for the moment. Well, that was a great call by John marie right there. They blitzed on the first couple downs of that series. On third down, instead of bringing the pressure up the gut, they left their linebackers space to read and evaluate, and the outside zone was eaten up because they weren't on the line of scrimmage. See that, Coach? See, we, we, we got it together. After that penalty, everything was better. Give and take between. Uh, they're going to come after this one again. They've been coming after every punt tonight. Every punt. Gotten a piece of two, cleanly blocked one. This time, they almost get there. But Tulsa can't block for the punt. And that sets up the return. Out across the 35 to the 36 yard line by Fullwood. I have noticed that Tulsa needs to work on this. <laughs> Their punt block. Unit has not been great. What a night to be out on the water, be here in Tampa. Fourth quarter action, Bulls with a 10-point lead. ESPN Thursday Night College Football, brought to you by Fidelity Investments. A kid who has meant more to this program maybe than any other player in their football history. Quentin Flowers, his decorated South Florida career at home coming to an end tonight. Certainly not going to be the end of his career. He'll be playing in a bowl game. Which bowl game? Still to be determined. Maybe a conference championship game. Bulls get the ball back here and hand it off after a net 20-yard punt by Tulsa. 
The punt game has been so awful for the Golden Hurricane that South Florida's had great field position all second and a half, and they only have three points total to show for it. Really surprised that Tulsa didn't make an adjustment with their count. You got three guys protecting the punter. It's just a numbers game. They're just missing the count every time. Second and eight. Flowers swings it out. Very dangerous. Knocked away incomplete. Reggie Robinson is playing a heck of a game. He has stood out for Tulsa at his defensive back spot. Yeah, Reggie Robertson's their best cover corner by far. This is a run play. This is an RPO, a read pass or a run pass option for Flowers. Probably should have handed that one off. When you have a press corner on the outside, that's not a good situation for the slip screen to the outside receiver. So here we go again, third and eight for the Bulls, whose offense was so high flying their first few drives and really through the first half of this game. It has quieted down. Flowers with pressure coming, gets away initially. Flowers throws it, and that along the sideline is complete. And one official says yes, the other says no. They're going to talk about it and say it's a catch. Jimmy Alaka with the catch for now, it stands. Rolling on the field, catch. Left foot is in, but. Man, did Oof. he control it? Did he have control? Well, they get the play snap. No, they didn't. They were trying, you can understand why, trying to get to the line quickly. Previous play of a catch is under further review. But they're going to look at it. That'll give us a chance to take a break. So the replay officials will take a look at this. We will as well, and maybe give you the verdict when we come back right after this. Twenty-seven, seventeen. the score, fourth quarter, South Florida with the lead, a play under review as we went to timeout. Ruled on the field as a completed catch for a first down. What do you think? Well, first off, Alaka's has got to use his hands. He dropped one earlier that hit him square in the chest. It's a catch if he uses his hands, but as it gets to his body, he has control of it with the left hand. The right hand comes to provide extra security for it. The ball doesn't move a ton. Yeah, let's get the ruling. They have enough to overturn the call. Very close, debatable. We're good to go if he's waiting for us. <laughs> I, I wish I could yell down to our referee, Charles. Chuck, we're good. After further review, the rolling in the field stands. It is a completed catch. First down for USF, off the start of my whistle. And probably one of those that if that's called incomplete on the field, it probably stands as well. Yeah. One of those so close, they're going to they're gonna err with the call on the field. Tough to overturn that. I thought a really nice play by the quarterback to yeah. buy some oh, time absolutely. and deliver the ball. Malaka made it close, but Quentin Flowers gets a first down. Clock will start to roll. Faking that fly sweep and nowhere to go for Quentin Flowers. He lost some yardage and took a big hit at the end of the play. Jeremy Smith with a nice play. Jeremy Smith's a good player. He's the leader of this front four. Long player, 6'5", 265. Great play there because he actually stretched and got wide with the jet sweep. And Flowers had a step. If he hits that with some acceleration, he may have a chance. But a slight hesitation allowed Smith to get back into position. Smith 98, number 8, Brubaker, the other defensive end in their standard alignment. Both are good players, maybe the two best on the defensive side of the ball. Johnson gets the carry. Just got a few to set up third down. Under 10 minutes to go, South Florida. And at this point, I guess you don't care how you do it as long as you actually do it. Flowers deep down the sideline and incomplete. Trying for a locker. It's fourth and seven. Oh, and another throw I think Flowers is going to want to have back. Got to leave this one on the field. You see, it just lands out of bounds. A little more upfield. Locker is going to have a chance to make a play on it, but good coverage there either way. And it is interesting. They keep throwing the ball. Flowers uh -huh. is 10 for 26. He's got. 122 rush yards, nine yards a pop when he's kept it on the ground. They've got two other running backs who each have 80 plus yards. South Florida has run for 287 yards in the last few times they've had the ball. 
They've been airing it out. End over end punt with the fair catch signal at about the 14 yard line. Tulsa gets it back. Our college football look ahead brought to you by Xfinity X1. Slate of some of the games this weekend. We've been talking about Virginia and Miami, UCLA, USC, Rosen against Sam Darnold. I want to go up to the right upper corner. Central Florida and Temple. Noon on ESPNU. Now look, Central Florida, they're 15th ranked in the they are the highest group of five team in the playoff rankings. And I, I know it's been a great year for Scott Frost. All kinds of talk about him. Where's his next job? Is he going to leave? Is he going to Florida? Is he going to Nebraska, Tennessee? They better be careful in Philadelphia. Temple, we saw them on this field on Thursday night early in the year. Not good. Lately, much better. The Owls have been a real tough team the last few weeks, and I don't think that's going to be easy for Central Florida. You're loving the upsets. I, 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 Dicky V style. I'm kind of, Upset City, baby. I, I'm kind of sensing a close <laughs> game. I don't know if Temple's got enough to actually pull it off. Central Florida is a very good team, but I think that one's going to be close. As it is here tonight. I mean, we didn't think this one was going to be close. If you look at it on paper, shouldn't be. Brewer, and out. A penalty flag throw. I, I, I don't know if he was trying to throw that near the tackle for a horse collar or near the offensive lineman for a holding. Personal foul. Hands to the face. Defense number 56. Okay, neither. 15 yard penalty added to the end of the run. Automatic. First down. But a 15-yard penalty against South Florida gives Tulsa some better field position and a first down. You're going to see it on the right side of your screen here. Hands to the face. It's, it's tough as a defensive lineman. You're playing fast, aggressive. That probably happens on more plays than you think. It hurts you big when you get caught. And South Florida trying to make their matchup with Central Florida be a huge one, potentially for a chance to play for the conference title. You got Memphis on the other side of the American, but Central Florida and South Florida, the two rivals on this side. President throws down the sideline. Tons of contact. Here come two flags. And I think that one was obvious. Trying to hit Justin Hobbs. Dietrich Nichols with the coverage. Defense number five. Automatic. First down. And the matchup they've been trying to take advantage of. Motion them in to add a little more leverage. Hobbs is their 6'4 receiver on a very talented Dietrich Nichols. But just got to get around and play the ball a hair more. Yeah, it was obviously number three, despite what uh, the official announced. Nichols, the guy, flagged there. So I'm just saying, I want to I want to finish up. Give me it. Uh, just like we said with South Florida, you better not. All these kids, they know so many of the players on each side, Central Florida, South Florida. So many of them know each other from high school. Central Florida better not look ahead. Nichols makes a break on the ball and almost comes up with the interception. That was a little better from Dietrich Nichols, the senior. Just could not quite hang on. You can't do this. Ten-point game, eight minutes left in the fourth quarter. This one's got to either be thrown early or, as I said earlier, ten rows up into the bleachers. Didn't have his feet underneath him to get enough velocity on the ball, and you cannot afford a turnover, especially in plus territory here. And Nichols misses a chance for an interception. He's got three of them this year. South Florida's got 17 as a team coming in, second most in college football. President had nowhere to go. Crunched by the South Florida defense. And this is a designed quarterback draw. They're going to try to pump to the running back on the left, get the linebackers to move, but Khalid McGee comes straight down the pipe unblocked. That's a miss right there by Chris Minter. He's got to pick that up as he comes across the tight end from the backside, number six. Now you got a third and long. President, pressured again, and he'll go down again. He did flip it away. And they blow the whistle, yeah. Incomplete, although, hey, yeah, they're, they're saying an incomplete pass, and there was somebody, I guess, in the neighborhood enough for that not to be a sack or grounding. It's fourth down. Tell you what, USF right now is not respecting Chad President as a passer. They're going man press on the outside. They're bringing pressure up the gut. There's just too many defenders coming for Tulsa to block. I think he was down, by the way. 
pass. They're going to look at it. Yeah. Of an incomplete pass is under further review. I, I, I think there's a pretty good argument to be made based on that quick look. Now we'll look at it again. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think the knee was down before he released the ball. It, it's just a matter of field position and crediting the defense with a sack. It's going to be fourth down no matter what. But I, my guess just based on that quick glimpse was he was down. And you're right. The, the, the fact that Skipper is no longer in has yep. changed this game. Is he down? His right knee. Yep. Yes. Down. Ball still in his hand. Not yet right there. They applaud the effort. Yep. Just this, and as I mentioned, there's just too many guys swarm into the ball right now because they're playing single high man press on the outside, not respecting the pass at all. After further review, the quarterback's right knee was touching the ground prior to releasing the pass. The ball will be placed at the 36-yard line, where it will be fourth down. The clock That's will start on my whistle difference of 12 yards of field position plus the clock will roll Saturday night 8 Eastern 5 Pacific on ABC number 11 USC climbing up those rankings still maybe an outside shot we'll see at home at the Coliseum against UCLA Rosen against Darnold the former quarterback do you have a preference <laughs> I think Rosen is the most NFL ready right now those mm. are both guys that are going to play at the next level an exciting matchup. Both didn't, haven't had the seasons we've expected them to have either. True. Rosen got off to the spectacular start. Darnold coming off the Rose Bowl performance against Penn State. I mean, Tulsa cannot block for the punt team. And it's, it's, it feels like a miracle every time they actually get the ball punted. Long night for Thomas Bennett. The Bulls trying to finish things off crisply here on senior night. They lead 27-17. and the college football playoff. New Year's Six, that's where South Florida would like to end up, and they still have a legitimate chance. In fact, I would argue they control their own destiny to be that group of five representative. Absolutely. They can survive tonight if UCF takes care of business as well and have a matchup for possibly a big spot in the New Year's Six Bowl. I think you got to be a conference champion to be that group of five teams. So that's a requirement. So South Florida would have to win the next two games. This one plus Central Florida plus Memphis in the conference championship game as Flowers will go down on first down. And if they do that, if they beat both Central Florida and Memphis and are the champ in the American, which to me is by far the strongest conference this year in the group of five, then I think they would be the representative. And in fact, I would say Boise State, they've had a nice comeback season, Jordan. But I, I think the winner of the American is going to be that team. I think. I think so, too. I mean, they'd be knocking off a top 15 team in the country in the committee's eyes. I don't see how you can look past that. And if it's Central Florida that survives to the championship game, matched up with Memphis, I think either one of those teams would have a great argument. South Florida. And Tice did a good job at least to go down, keep the clock moving. That's been a really disjointed second half for the South Florida offense. You want to take time off the clock by running the football, but what you notice is Tulsa is stacking everybody they got inside the 10. Obviously, third long here. They're going to play coverage, but first and second down, they are playing the run and nothing but the run. Well, the second half numbers, eh, there have been some drops, there have been some extenuating circumstances, but one for 10 throwing the ball. It's third and 13. Flowers is going to run and has nowhere to go. Goes backwards. And the fans here are a little impatient with what's going on. And I, don't, I don't necessarily blame them. Three points total combined between both teams in the second half. I think South Florida's got a little conservative. Rightfully so. You want to start taking time off the clock, but you still have to take chances. You have talented receivers on the outside. You got to take advantage of some shots every now and then, if at least to keep the defense on their heels. I, I, maybe, who knows, maybe the head coach has stepped in and said, look, with the backup in for Tulsa, they are not going to move the ball against us. So all we got to do is keep the clock moving, avoid a mistake. Like that, they get a punt blocked. And Tulsa with the ball loose on the turf. 
Sloan dead, even though nobody in the end really had the ball. That is a mistake by South. That's what's not supposed to happen in this spot. And the special teams meltdowns for South Florida this year are just inexplicable. You mentioned it earlier, and I mentioned it as well. Special teams will come into play in the biggest games at the biggest moments. You take it for granted at times. You're going to see Tulsa's going to come after this one. I don't think I've ever been a part of a game where I've seen as many punts contested as tonight on both sides of the ball. Figure out, somebody figure out how to block for a punt. It isn't that hard. It just isn't. Now there was a push at the end. That was the punter himself, wasn't it? <laughs> Hernandez? Yeah. Hernandez not too happy about that one, but that'll hurt your team even more. The kick across the line of scrimmage is touched there by Tulsa. Also recovered by Tulsa. It will be first down. And nobody's happy here. A punt block by Ryan McDaniel, who is a defensive back on this Tulsa team. That is the seventh blocked kick given up by South Florida this year. And this is their tenth game. They've almost averaged a block kick a game. Look, look at this. Usually you got three guys back here. There is a there is a hole. Charlie Strong is really unhappy. I was just looking back at that punt. It, they, they messed up. Yes, they did. And meanwhile, Tulsa's offense has had basically zero chance since their starting quarterback left the game. Look at this. There is a gap here. Usually there's three guys protecting the punter. There's nobody in the middle. That shouldn't happen. That should not happen. I, you, you, you got... Texas fans who are out there watching saying, you know what? We think that sounds pretty. It's just <laughs> something about Charlie Strong's teams these last few years. They have really struggled in the special teams game. That throw across the middle completed, but absolutely nowhere to go for Justin Hobbs. Third and nine coming up. Under five minutes to go. It is a 10-point lead for South Florida. I tell you what, it's not been pretty on either side here. One play here by Tulsa, though, and uh, we got ourselves a game. They also are in field goal range, down two scores. You don't have to get the touchdown as long as you get something. Showing pressure, President. A little shoulder fake toward the end zone and toward the defense. Nobody was there for Tulsa. That's lucky that wasn't picked off. Fourth down. And you got to kick it here. Down 10, four and a half minutes left. You still have all three of your timeouts. There's a lot of ball game left if you're Tulsa. Take the points. Make this a one-score game. That was, a, that was a, a, a mental error there by Tyree McCants. He was supposed to be on a vertical route. It was a, a busted route. Redford Jones, who has made one tonight, his only attempt, this one from 38 yards, the all-time leading scorer in Tulsa history to make this a one-score game. That one is not real pretty, but it is right down the middle. A knuckleball. The points count. Tulsa not going quietly. 4.19 to go. Florida's lead is down to seven. The U is back, and it's the talk of this state. Miami, number three in the playoff rankings with the win over Notre Dame, the big win over Virginia Tech. It's all set up for the Hurricanes. The Bulls have a lot to play for, but this has been an ugly second half at home for Quentin Flowers and this uh, South Florida team on senior night. Had a comfortable lead in this one. It is down to one score. And there will be a lot of pressure on the South Florida offense when they come back on the field. Setting up with a short return man. That kick is going to go. Bounce. And a very effective kickoff with the return. Luckily for South Florida across the 10. Here comes a penalty flag at the end of the play. Well, this could be terrible field position for South Florida depending on what the call is. After the play was over, personal foul. Late hit, kicking team number wow. 35. 
15 yard penalty from the dead ball spot. First down. That's a big mistake for Tulsa. That's a good break because that's another special teams miscue. I, I hate to harp on it, but there's no need to be moved up as a kickoff return unit there. You got to know Tulsa's got three timeouts, four minutes left. They've been kicking the ball deep all night. It, it should be one that's returned. You can understand why they threw the flag. Not a lot of extracurricular yeah. stuff there. That wasn't real vicious, but play was over. He dove on the uh, kick returner. They get the flag instead of, you're right, instead yeah. of very poor field position for Flowers and USF. A little breathing room in a spot where a few first downs may put this game away. Flowers running. They have gone into a shell. This South has, Florida offense. This has to be a statement drive for Flowers. I hope on the sidelines as a quarterback, I would have rallied my troops and said, hey, we control it right now. Let's go down, take some time off the clock, but we have to get points here to end this game. And not a good play to start this drive on first down, just one yard. Under four minutes to go. Tulsa's got all three timeouts. Taking all the time they can off the clock. And that's the idea. You want to do that. Quick tempo a lot of the time. Not here. Better go, though, if you're going to do it. Seven. Flowers takes the snap with two seconds to spare. Going backwards now, being pressured. Throws! And was that one intercepted? No. It was close, uh, though, Dave. That's, that should have been intercepted. Man. Whitfield broke on that ball with a chance to keep his feet in bounds. This is going to be the third time I've said it, Dave, but you get outside the pocket, in this game, both sides, Tulsa, you can't afford a turnover, don't force it, and especially USF backed up. Throw that ball out of bounds. Live another down. Stop the clock. That's good for Tulsa. The last eight plays combined for South Florida's offense, two yards total. Third down. Flowers delivers. That one is caught, and it's going to depend on the spot. I think he's short. He is definitely short by a full yard. On fourth down, and I got to think the Bulls are punting the ball away. They will, and this is this is a mistake by Marquez Valdez Scantling. He runs just short of the first down marker. He's got to get to there. No matter if that route is designed to be exactly that distance, on third down, you got to get past the sticks, two yards past the sticks, to ensure that that's a first down. I think Cooper Edmondson, Edmiston was the middle linebacker who made that solid open field tackle. Man, South Florida, this has been an ugly second half. They block for this punt, and it's a high punt. Fair catch right at the 25. 75 yards or so to go for Tulsa. Quentin Flowers, frustration here on senior night for the most decorated player in the history of this program. And a mistake here. This led to it. Points off the board. Late scramble into your left as a quarterback. Don't throw it back over the middle. One of many mistakes. That one just happened to be a turnover. The other mistakes have just been missed throws. I think conservative play calling. Special teams has been atrocious. And meanwhile, Tulsa's offense, without their starting quarterback, they have 60 total yards in the second half. And somehow they're in the game with a chance to tie. Incomplete on first down. The question is, can they go 75 yards with president and quarterback? I'm not sure we know the answer to that. Let's go down the floor. Well, we've seen a lot of guts tonight from D'Angelo Brewer, guys. And on this Tulsa sideline, obviously still in pain with that right ankle injury, just walking up and down the sideline as much as possible, trying to keep the ankle feeling warm. But I think it's also just trying to pump this team up. They're excited over here on this Tulsa sideline. And Tulsa picked up the pressure there, and the president managed to complete it to Nigel Carter. Clock runs. That play inbounds. Tulsa still not using their timeouts. It's third down. Brewer, who has had a big night running the ball despite not being fully healthy. Not sure they can afford to keep the ball on the ground very often on this drive. President throws. That is Brewer caught for a first down and more. And he gets out of bounds to stop the clock at about the 47-yard line. This is a great play design to see Brewer still not 100% healthy, but he bluffs the blitzing linebacker there. 
normal protection, he'd pick him up, bluffs him, and that's a design play right there. Just an easy throw, a dump off. Great call for this offense, knowing there'd be pressure on third. 155 to go. Tulsa, two and eight, one conference win against an eight and one team that thinks it can go to a New Year's Six bowl game. That is definitely in the balance here for South Florida. President across the middle, too high, incomplete. He had Hobbs open, missed him, almost hit Keenan Johnson accidentally behind him. And just the inconsistency. I mean, he's not as polished a passer as Skipper is. Skipper probably has a better chance to make that throw. But if I'm if I'm Montgomery here, I am getting Chad President outside the pocket. Give him a two-way go to run or pass. 151 to play. That time he dumps it off to the tight end who cuts it up field, takes a big hit, hangs on to the ball, and is down at about the 46 yard line, three yards short of the first down. Clock rolls. A South Florida player that looks like Nichols is down and hurting. That will stop the clock. One of the best players on defense for USF. Dietrich Nichols who grew up with Quentin Flowers. They've known each other since they were seven years old. Came to USF together and have led the resurgence of this South Florida program. And Quentin, I think, is concerned about his pal. And Nichols has been all over the field. Probably the most versatile player. He's played safety, both safety positions, both corner positions. And heavy personnel, he comes up and plays linebacker. You need your best players out there with a minute 37 seconds left. A lot of concern down there right now for, for Nichols. All right, so Nichols, uh, hopefully he's okay. South Florida 8-1, and one, even with that loss, in position in the uh, American Conference on the east side where UCF leads 6-0, and 9-0 and overall. South Florida one game behind with the head-to-head -head matchup looming on Friday, Nichols will get up and slowly make his way off the field. And I don't know about you, Jordan, but I have to think that at least some of the South Florida fans are thinking about that one Bulls loss because Houston was here in this stadium faced to what, fourth and 24? And yeah. converted, kept the game alive, ultimately punched it in and, and beat USF. Yeah, punched it in by a missed tackle. We've seen a lot of that tonight. Quarterback for Houston made a run to finish it off, but imperative that this USF defense does not give up a big play. You can give up a few yards here and there. Let the let the clock tick. But a big third down. President throws across the middle incomplete. Hobbs went down. It wasn't a perfect pass. Tried to grab it. Couldn't do it. It's fourth down. And basically, it's not officially the game because Tulsa does have all three of its timeouts. I'll tell you what though. It, you may be sitting at home thinking that's a bad pass on a slant that's well covered. You want to throw it low, let your guy go down to catch it. One that Hobbs should have had. Fourth and three. President pressured, dumps it off to Brewer. First down and four to the 30. And Tulsa still breathing in this game. A minute 19 to go, that's 24 yards. Same exact play they ran earlier in the drive to the left side with Brewer. That's a bluff on a blitzing linebacker. Easy throw and dump off. Play fake on first down. President will throw the ball incomplete. That stops the clock. 106 to go. You're going to see pressure come off this side. Brewer's going to blitz, or excuse me, bluff those guys once again. An easy throw and catch. This is a play that. At some point, USF has got to change. They got to go man to man. Someone's got to be accounting for the running back. He is easily their best playmaker on the offensive side of the ball. 31 yards away from tying this game, and who knows? Maybe they go for it. Flags thrown. Tulsa moved. If you're a two and eight team with nothing to lose, if you I'm get in the end zone, I'm going for I it. I might do it too. Illegal snap. Offense number man. 74. Five yard penalty. Second down. I have never ever <laughs> seen a game where the center has been called for that three times. This one is maybe more understandable. But even still, Chad President has been in the game for a while already. Occasionally that happens the first couple plays, a new quarterback, new cadence, new rhythm to how he gets the snap is in the game, but unacceptable there. A good player, Chandler Miller. He is. Third illegal snap penalty of this game. Second and 15. 
South Florida did not look particularly organized. It didn't matter because Greg Reeves got to the quarterback. Tulsa better call a timeout. They do. What a huge loss. Greg Reeves. He's got a quick twitch off the outside. You're going to see him up here, number 41. Times up the snap here perfectly. And Willie Wright, the right tackle, is not able to get there in time in his drop. Reeves is, is a heck of an athlete. He might be the most athletic guy on this entire team. Jean-Marie was saying their best pass rusher for sure. And I saw this on film all week. He times up those snaps better than anybody I've seen in a while. I mean, he's a guy who played on a very talented high school team and was not recruited yeah. at all. He was a safety. I mean, this is a guy who's playing 250 plus now as defensive end. He was a safety in high school. He came to USF as a preferred walk-on. He's been given a scholarship now, has gone from safety to linebacker to defensive end, and has found a home. Third and 21. All right, Dave, you just want to try to get half here. Don't need to get it all. President throws across the middle. They get some, not quite half, but some. Brewer, clock is rolling. And I, if I were Tulsa, I'd take one of those timeouts to make sure I was organized on fourth down. They're not doing it. They're letting the clock roll. Boy, I would too. I, I don't get this at all. Got three receivers to the top of your screen, only two defenders. Oh, now they move. They may call that against yeah. South Florida. Reeves trying to bait him. And that's a little break for Tulsa. It'll stop the clock on the defensive penalty. If that's what the call is. Offside. Defense number 41. Jumped into the neutral zone causing the offense a false start. Audrey penalty. Fourth down. Makes fourth down a little easier. It's a big penalty. Reeves at the right side of your screen here. He's been good at timing those. Man, I don't. It, I, the official said jumped into the neutral zone. Didn't look like he moved that far. I, I didn't see a jump. That's I saw a, a little flinch. I don't. I don't know that he ever moved an inch. It's a friendly call. If I'm Tulsa. My best receiver, number 29, Justin Hobbs, six four, is at the bottom of the screen in man coverage. I'm working that side. Game on the line. President. Throws incomplete. Nobody there. And USF is going to survive barely. Complete miscommunication between Chad President and Keenan Johnson on the outside. And you didn't need it. You're going to see three receivers to the stop, the top of your screen. This is going to be a stop route. By Keenan Johnson, just not on the right page. Chad President was thinking outside. Boy. Only two timeouts for Tulsa. So Flowers and USF, they can take a knee. And Tulsa is going to call. Are they? I thought they were. I guess not. They won't use the timeout. And very frustrating for Tulsa. They played hard tonight against a very talented USF team. It maybe wasn't the senior night that Flowers and company dreamed of, but it's a win. South Florida's 9-1. and one. They survive a test from Tulsa. Film always looks better when it's a win. They'll make some corrections. And finally get an opportunity to do what they haven't done here. It's UCF, possibly, if they take care of business next week. Central Florida still has to cooperate, yep. although no matter what happens in Philadelphia, it's going to be a big game between the two rivals in this American Conference, USF, UCF, the Friday after Thanksgiving. It'll be a big one. South Florida's going to have to play better than they did tonight. Quentin Flowers, who is such a great kid and a great story, all the emotion of a senior day without his mom, without his dad, without his brother, everything that he has gone through. Quinn Flowers gets another win for his South Florida Bulls team on his senior night. Jordan, fun to have you on Thursday night. Thanks for being with us. It's a good time. For Laura Rutledge, for Jordan Rogers, Dave Fleming saying so long here. 27-20 final score. Sports Center coming up in 15 seconds.